zone. Oh, a touchdown! A Kansas City Chiefs record. Elliott, hurdle. Look at this. Yeah, eat him up. Breeze looks left. Has man front pile on. Caught Mike Thomas. Brady devoured. Patriots dropped to 7-3. and three. There goes Joe Cannon. This morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. Uh, I know four other guys who woke up this morning feeling pretty dangerous yeah, as we baby. welcome you to this yeah, week 10 edition of the Aftermath presented by Farmers Insurance, your home, not just for what happened on Sunday. But how oh, and why it all right. went down, and here we go. Hello, everybody. Rhett Lewis here with you, my roundtable of football junkies, ready to answer the how and the why for you. To my left, my man Jim Trotter. Welcome back, my friend. Good Thank to have you, you here with us. Daniel Jeremiah was up in Oakland as the uh, radio voice of the Chargers broadcast on Sunday. Saw that game. We'll have that for you coming up. Steve Weich, what's up, brother? You were yes, at the Coliseum, correct? I was. Indeed, LA for a, what, good was game. a tremendous yeah, game Seahawks, very between good game. the Rams and Seahawks. We will get there, but we are going to begin this Monday with Sunday Night Football. Football. It ended up being a pretty dramatic oh, one yeah. at the end and on. at it's the start on. as well. Yeah, this, this, these two teams like have history. These two NFC East rivals, second quarter. Let's get to the action. Dallas already up 3-0. Hey, here's a blueprint for victory. Give the ball to Ezekiel Elliott and watch him go. 32 yards with the hurdle. Hit it with the Nehemiah. That's for one real. of the best hurdles I think terrific. I've ever seen. Just fantastic. Absolutely absolutely terrific. Terrific. back leg, phenomenal. I mean, what's Trey Sullivan do there? You know, that's... <laughs> Uh, so let's go to the next possession after a uh, field goal would come after this Ezekiel Elliott run. And Dak Prescott is in for a one-yard score. Cowboys up 13-3 at the half. 13-6 oh. now, third quarter. Back come the Eagles. Zach Ertz had a monster day. Love Great the salute to service salute. there. Very the nice. Game. Okay, fourth quarter. Cowboys ball. Tie ball game here. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and he's got the score through the air this time. Second receiving touchdown of the season, and the Cowboys are back out in front, but again, back come the Eagles. And it's Zach Ertz again with the answer here, and we're tied at 20. Suing Cowboys possession. Prescott, Allen Hearns. This was a huge play here. 23 yards down to the Eagles, nine. He's finally come up with some big catches the last couple weeks. He's starting to show up a little bit. And then Ezekiel Elliott will finish off this drive. Another touchdown here puts the Cowboys back on top by seven. Zeke, 19 carries, 151 on the ground. Later in the fourth here, the Eagles ball still down seven. This was it right here. Last chance. Hurts with a desperation lateral to Golden Tate. No dice. Time runs out on the Eagles' comeback. And the Cowboys, after all was said about them being written off a week ago after the loss of the Titans, come back and win it 27-20. to Dak Prescott, 26-36, 270, and a touchdown, feeling like they're finally playing to their potential. This is the team we have, and this is when, we, when everything's clicking and we're playing the way that we need to be playing. This is what we're capable of. I just, I just knew Wednesday, as we talked about, where everybody came in and pissed. Everybody was pissed Wednesday when we came back. And um, But as I said, we didn't hang our heads down. We picked our heads up. Uh, we looked at each other, locked arms, and, and kept moving forward. I knew we were going to give ourselves a great chance to win this game. And this one hurt. So I know um, we got a lot of veterans in there, a lot of leadership. And, uh, you know, like you said, like Coach said, um, and I'm going to keep echoing the same thing. We all got to look in the mirror. What can we do differently? What, where can we be better? Um, and we realize a lot of people are going to want to write us off at this point. And uh, now it's just time to, to play ball and, and try and go shock some people. Okay, we'll try to figure out what's ailing uh, the Eagles here in just a second. But, Steve, for the Cowboys, you know, all this talk about uh, the, the turnover, or the uh, tumult there and, and everything, the turmoil, rather. And, and they come back and they get a win. But this is, this is kind of the state of, of this Cowboys yeah, team Yeah, right you know, now. look, we're, we're going to ebb and flow. A lot of people, oh, the Cowboys, now they saved their season. <laughs> well, Or just okay. prolonging the inevitable. Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, look, had they lost, it would have made things worse. But you know what? They've got one more win than the Bills. Yeah. Okay, they have not won consecutive games this season. Buffalo's going, hey, what do we deserve? <laughs> you, yeah. you know what? You're just going to use it as, as the bar right here. <laughs> 
Well, they have won consecutive games this season. If, if Dallas can show that they're better than an 8-8 eight eight team, which is the pace that they're on right now, then maybe, okay, string, string together a couple wins, maybe we have a shot because this is a winnable division. But to say beating an Eagles team that has been just as up and down sets them on course, you know, we'll see. They finally got Ezekiel Elliott going. Something should have gotten done, but I, I'm still not buying in on them yet. If anything, the division still gives them a chance, right? No, it absolutely does. But the 8-8 eight eight mark that you talked about is so critical because if you go back, the last NFC East champion to win the division with fewer than nine wins was 1982, and that was a strike season. <laughs> that was Washington. So you've got to get That's to nine wins. Yeah. yeah, you've got to get to nine wins. And when you look at the schedule, it's tough for Dallas yep. to get there. When you talk about they have to go to Atlanta this week, they still have to play New Orleans. They still have to play at Indianapolis. So when you look at Washington right now that's leading the division, for them – you talk about they have to play the Giants. They have to play the Jaguars. If both those teams are struggling, you figure maybe that's two wins They're for them. Beat up Washington too, is beat up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But that gets them to eight. And now they need one more, and they have to find one among Houston, Philly two times, or Tennessee. I like Washington's odds yep. in that situation. And the Eagles, if they want to get uh, themselves back in the race here, they face a tough road ahead as well. And, and DJ, when you look on the field, there's something about the Eagles that just does it, but Philly that just doesn't feel special anymore. As you look at their upcoming schedule, you got the Saints coming up, you got the Redskins, then after that, and then they'll see the Cowboys again as well before another meeting with the Rams. A week bunch 15. of division leaders in that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. exactly. To there. finish there, look, yesterday, no run game, couldn't stop the run, but, yep. but what make, what, what's the problem for Philly right now? Well, look, I'll give you kind of the step back picture here is they start slow offensively almost every single week. They're last in the NFL in first quarter scoring, so they can't get in any rhythm early in ball games. That's the big offensive problem. And then defensively, they can't get stops when they need them late in games. We've seen it time in and time out throughout this entire season. So that's kind of backing things up. Now, when you look at them personnel-wise, there's issues. There's multiple issues. The line of scrimmage, that's where they won their Super Bowl last yes, year. Sir. Offensive line, defensive line, dominating football. We're not seeing that. You saw Ezekiel Elliott run right through that defensive front. Now, hopefully you get Timmy Jernigan back. That'll help a little bit there. But you get one addition on the D-line, and now you lose somebody in the yeah, secondary. Tough so, loss, too. Uh, it's, Darby it's, out, out with the, the torn year. ACL. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for this group. So we'll see going forward. I don't know anybody in this division is going to totally run away with it. Yeah. But when I look at that schedule, it's challenging to get to that nine number uh, that Jim's talking about. And so with Darby out, I mean, even just last night, they were already without Sidney Jones and Jalen Mills in the secondary as well. So, again, taking another hit there with Darby out for the rest of the season. We're going to get deeper into the NFC East a bit in our next hours. We'll bring the Redskins a little bit more into the conversation and what Josh Norman had to say about the fans uh -oh. there at FedEx Field. <laughs> All right, still to come for you, already the picture of pass game proficiency. The Saints put on a clinic in Cincinnati, but are they the best offense in football? We'll dig into it. Plus, here's another picture for you. Yes, stumbling Tom Brady describing the bigger picture problems the Patriots had in Nashville. Why the New England offense fell flat. Next. That was a nice alliteration. The Aftermath is presented by Farmers Insurance. Find an agent at farmers.com. You're a high performer. You're ready for anything the day could throw at you, but your textile dysfunction could be holding you back. Mizzen in Maine makes a shirt that cures the millions of men suffering from textile dysfunction in their dress shirts. Going to the dry cleaners wasn't enjoyable for me or my wife. With Mizzen in Maine, we wash my shirts at home. Thousands of men can now easily take care of their shirt at home without taking pointless, expensive trips to the dry cleaner. My problem came when others were able to notice my TD. I used to sweat through my shirt, but not anymore. Mizzen and Main dress shirts use incredible moisture wicking technology that pulls sweat away from the body, removing the worry of showing sweat. This performance driven fabric includes four way stretch, allowing for extreme ease of movement. If you experience your dress shirt looking great longer than four hours, good job. Mizzen and Main dress shirts give the longest lasting, best look for men. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for looking the best you've ever looked in your life. Visit MizzenandMain.com for free shipping on orders of $100 or more. It's a great day. We got football, baby. You spoke oh, my language right there. We've got celebrity guests one after the other. Hey! What it's a way to good. start the day. It's incredible. Ooh. That's why we're the best. NFL Game Day Highlights. 
Catch up on Sunday's biggest plays with extensive highlights from the entire day's slate of games. The finest hour of football television. Touchdown Giants! NFL Game Day highlights, Sunday at 7.30, only on NFL Network. Everybody work out, feel the energy. Build a better body, less that you can be. Better body, easy hands, one, two, three. Strong abs, lean back, tight buns, love to run, strap crunch, chest fly, pull those arms over high. Better body, easy as one, two, three with total jam. Furnace breakdown, that could be $3,300. Fridge on a Fritz, that could cost you $2,500. Get the first American home warranty plan. And when a covered item breaks, call or click. That's it. And we'll repair or replace it for you. Why let a major system or appliance breakdown bust your budget? Or go through the hassle of trying to find trustworthy service people? If you don't have First American Warranty, get it. Call 1-800-967-9479 for a free no-obligation quote. Let's get back to the highlights here in the aftermath presented by Farmers Insurance. Mike Vrabel, the first former Bill Belichick coach player to face off against Belichick as a head coach. And, boy, he was prepared for this one. Tennessee already up 7-3. How about this throw and catch here? Mariota to Corey Davis. Dropped that one in the bucket. Yeah, he did. Seven catches, 125, and a touchdown for Corey Davis. Patriots had some problems on third down here, playing again without Rob Gronkowski for the second straight week. Patriots down 14-3. Brady sacked Ooh. by Wesley Woodyard. Loss of 11. They'd have to punt it there. Second quarter now, another third down, and, well, that's just out of bounds. Looking for James White. Led to a Patriots missed field goal. Second quarter, another third down, incomplete to Josh Gordon. Adoree Jackson was on Josh Gordon quite a he bit had a good in this game. one. Nice job on him. And then how about Derrick Henry getting into the end zone here? One yard touchdown. Titans again taking a 14 point lead. Most points, points they scored in the first half this season. Also the most points the Patriots have allowed in a first half this season. Let's go to the fourth. Patriots down 17. Tom Brady, a little trickery. Hand off James White. Pitch to Julian Edelman. Back to Brady. Caught it this time, but also caught the Something on the 40-yard line there. Just yeah, Turf Monster got grabbed him. him. It's like trying to watch Vlade <laughs> Divac lead a fast break right there. <laughs> oh, look, it wasn't pretty. Good. Again, a, a picture of the overall struggles. I got, this trot, I got trot on that stumbled one. big time here. Brady <laughs> just 21 to 41. Vlade Divac <laughs> dropped in this show. This We're showing our age. Yeah, we're showing our age. Hey, our Vlade quarterback will not fall years. down. He will get the first down, says uh, Mike Vrabel. And Matt LaFleur in the Tennessee Titans offense. Titans win it 34 to 10, stopping the Patriots win streak there. And so as you get a look at what the Titans offense uh, has done the last two weeks, they doubled their points per game. Their yards per game is up near 100 here the last couple of weeks. Look at the big plays, definitely up. And the point differential uh, plus 38. And Deion Lewis, as you know, a former Patriot, certainly enjoyed getting the victory here. Yeah, it was a real sweet win, you know, uh, especially when you used to be there and they didn't want to bring you back. So uh, definitely real sweet. Uh, just have, I'm happy my teammates came out and played, and I love these guys. So it is a little personal. Hell yeah, it's personal. <laughs> That's what happens when you go cheap. You get your ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's an emotional thing, you know, and I think people have different emotional feelings. And, um, you know, Dion had a great career here. You know, it's hard to see great players go, and I know that's not the first time it's happened. It's happened to a lot of guys, and, you know, I'm sure when they go to different places, they want to beat us. Absolutely. I, I can understand that emotion. So we've had guys that come from other teams, and they want to beat that team. So it's just part of the sport, and, you know, I give them credit. They beat us. And when you win, you know, you could say a lot of things. It doesn't, you know, that's that's the reality of winning. So we'll just take our lumps and try to learn from them and come out here and do a lot better job the next six weeks. So Tom Brady can understand the emotion, but that was a strong statement of emotion from Deion Lewis. You know, there's so many organizations where that banner would fit right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we'll keep it right here. It, it, well, it, it was emotional, but, but I look what, what Tennessee's doing right now. I mean, they're playing solid football. They're kind of playing counter NFL football, they're playing that smash mouth. They're running the ball 36 times their past two games, 36 times each 
the past two games, the way they've run the ball. And Marcus Mariota, his completion percentage, and now they're setting up that run-action passing game, and that's making it work. Their, their offensive line is playing very well, DJ. I he's mean, comfortable. Yeah, he's yeah I mean, just everything they're going right now. Well, going he, right now. He's not just comfortable. He's healthy. Yeah, Final Great point. Week. Remember, yep. he had the hand injury for a while, and he couldn't grip the ball the way he wanted. So they had to rely even more on that run. Now he's healthy, and what they did, they crossed up the Patriots yesterday early and went to the pass game as opposed to the run game. As to Dion's comments here, <laughs> look, the Patriots have gotten the last laugh on a lot of people, yeah. so speak up now, but at the end of the day, I, I tend to believe the Patriots will be there. I kind of like it, you know? Like, say it while you can. That's the key. The other thing is, all those years you spent in England, you couldn't say anything. Correct. So that, you get a that's also true. <laughs> talk right. now. Maybe that's why Tom Brady can understand the emotion. Uh, all right, so, so DJ, look, the Patriots had problems. So we talked oh, yeah. about Josh Gordon being covered by Dory Jackson. He had a, Tom Brady a hard time finding Josh Gordon. But the one thing I found pretty interesting here in this, what's the one team that's given the Patriots trouble in the AFC over the course of the last five, six years? The Ravens, right? Yeah. Their defensive coordinator, Dean Pease, had, had some answers. He's now in Tennessee, and he made Tom Brady feel pretty uncomfortable. In this Did game. a nice job of getting him off the spot and then just making him uncomfortable. There were times, and we can show you the tape here, of three different plays where Tom Brady is pulling off throws, falling off throws. Sometimes we talk, call it falling off the mound, a little scouting term you'll throw out there. But watch him turn his shoulder right when he's getting ready to throw the football, which is going to have a big-time impact on your accuracy. This time, he just takes a dive. This is this is almost like Peyton Manning later in his career. He knows his value to the organization. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get down and sacrifice a completion and protect myself. And then two more examples. Again, just watch him turn his shoulder at the last second here as he's getting ready to throw the football. It's hard to be accurate when you're falling off and turning your other shoulder to protect yourself. That ball gets away from him. You saw it several times. I'll give you one more example of it. You can see it really good here uh, from the end zone. Got a pocket there for a second. It's clean, but he's got to hitch three or four times, and then boom, pulls that shoulder down. It's going to impact the accuracy of the football. It's not often you see that completion oh. percentage with Tom Brady. He just simply was not comfortable in this football and game. And what we saw on those tape, I mean, look at the blitz package. Some more of the rush yeah. to cover. You know, the Brady has not been up. good against the blitz and, this year. And, and, and they were coming with it. They were really mixing it up. Like you said, Dean Pease knows exactly how to get after him. Let's not forget that before Mariota pulled up last year in that playoff game, Tennessee was – you know, they, they gained a little confidence yeah. playing the Patriots up in New England. So, I mean, I think that, that, that mindset might have had a little something to do with it as well. And I will say this for the Patriots, protection-wise, Trent Brown was kind of in and out of this yeah. game. Uh, he was dealing with an illness. And then Shaq Mason, their right guard, was down as well. What they do, though, too, when they blitz is they will find an unathletic offensive lineman, which currently there's a couple options right. for this Patriots group, and they will isolate him with wide rushes and put those guards on an island, and they were able to get home repeatedly so with those, those second-level rushers. So that was a beautiful scheme by the Titans. So, Jim, uh, the Patriots now sit at 7-3. and three. You're watching a couple other teams in the AFC kind of stay up there at the top, and the, namely the Chiefs, right? So does this, this loss at this point in the season give you any pause or concern for the Patriots' ability to make their way through the postseason? Only in this sense. You know, they were sitting in a position where they had a chance to potentially win home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And if you look at New England, if memory serves me right, I believe they've won eight or nine straight at home in the postseason and 11 of their last 12. So if they have that, their chances obviously of going to a Super Bowl are, are increased. Sure. But now if they have to go through Kansas City or Pittsburgh, and they've had a lot of success against say the it, Steelers, say I know. Say it, or if they've got to come where? To say Stub it to the 25,000 Hub Hub Center Stub against Hub. the Chargers. Yes. Well, one thing that everybody's always but said. That, around, but that, excuse me, but that's not going to happen from this standpoint. The Chargers would have to win, win the division, division, and right now they're not there. So. Well, they're, they're close. They're close. <laughs> they're, so they've lost that, nine, what is it, talk, nine in a row to Kansas City? <laughs> they've yeah, got well, another, another chance to. They get another crack out of here. But the other thing, when you talk to people around the AFC, and I, you know, you guys know where I've worked, so you can imagine where this comes from, but it's almost every single year they point to that division that the Patriots play in as a huge advantage. And they say, okay, best quarterback, best coach, and every year they have to win two home games to go to the Super Bowl. That's been the path. Yes. Right. That might change. But if that changes if they this don't year, right. Right. will the end result then also change is uh, one of the questions. And I wonder if we're starting to see it with some of the offensive struggles, the impact of the absence of Rob Gronkowski Absolutely. at all for the last couple of weeks. I mean, it just gives you more options when you have him in there. I mean, yeah. he's a fantastic player. Defenses have to – 
scheme against you differently. So absolutely. You want to blitz as much as they blitzed? Yeah. yeah. Rob Gronkowski give you some trouble. We say 12 yeah. targets to Josh Gordon, four receptions. Yeah, that's not good But math. continuity and cohesion, too. Remember, Edelman's out those first four games. Yeah. Gronkowski's been in and out. Yeah. Hogan's been in and out. He, Gordon comes in he late. He missed Edelman a couple he times, did. too. Yeah. He missed him. He was open. And meanwhile, Chris Hogan hasn't caught a pass in two weeks. So things are just a little, a little off, it seems, after this game for the Patriots against the Titans. We got more to get to for you on the aftermath. We know the Rams are one of the best rushing teams in the NFL. Well, they showed it again in their win over Seattle, but just ahead by their rush defense. They end up being their undoing. And the Saints put up 51 in what was New Orleans' seventh straight victory. How the offensive outburst from New Orleans is influencing change. I think they just Cincinnati. Again, they did. That's next. <laughs> No matter what life throws down, Roomba is up for the challenge. Only Roomba uses two multi-surface rubber brushes that powerfully clean up debris on all your floors. And only the new Roomba i7 Plus empties its own bin into a disposable bag, so you can forget about vacuuming for weeks. If it's not for my robot, it's not a Roomba. We're more than just $5 medium one-topping pizzas, stuffed garlic knots, breadsticks, bone-out wings, pasta, and new Cinnabon mini rolls. We're the $5 lineup with the best sides for your pizza. $5 each. Choose two or more, $5 each. No one out pizzas the hut. Whatever your big job is, come into the Ram Black Friday sales event and get a great deal on the truck with the best resale value in the industry. And find out for yourself why more people are switching to Ram trucks than ever before. Because of all the things you've built this year, some are sweeter than others. Great deals going on all month at the Ram Black Friday sales event. Now get 1,000 Black Friday bonus cash for an average $10,000 in total values on the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Every TV doctor knows nothing's more important than a good bedside manner. I don't know how to say this. It's okay, Doc. Give it to me straight. No, you don't understand. I don't know how to say this. I'm... Just a TB doctor. They also know you should get your annual checkup. It could save your life. Schedule a checkup with your doctor. Know your four health numbers and start taking control of your health today. Cigna, together, all the way. To celebrate the Grinch movie, IHOP has all new Grinch pancakes, mint hot chocolate, and kids eat free from 4 to 10 p.m. Right, Mr. Grinch? <laughs> Get IHOP's new Grinch pancakes and see the Grinch in theaters. At the Joseph A. Bank Super Tuesday sale, save up to 70% on almost everything in store. All suits on sale starting at $1.99. All dress shirts just $39. Plus, take an extra 50% off all clearance. From stitch to store, that's the bank way. Wrangler jeans are made for those who roll with the times. Like him. And her. And these two. New styles. Great fits. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Slinging gives you the flexibility to watch the live TV you love. Speaking of flexibility, try new positions like the reverse armadillo. Foot stuff. The flirtatious kitten. That's my favorite. Only 25 bucks a month. Watch, sing, seven days free. Going up, does he come down with it? Touchdown, Seahawks! Caught! Seattle's going to the Super Bowl! Some endings are unforgettable. But Thursday night, Rodgers and the Packers look to write a new script against Russell Wilson, the Seahawks, and their Rockers home crowd. What a play! Packers, Seahawks, when it's on, it's on. Thursday Night Football, Thursday at 8 on NFL Network, Fox, and streaming on Prime Video. All right, back live with you here on the Aftermath as we take you to Cincinnati. Drew Brees and company, winners of seven straight coming into this game. And, uh, well, their tenure with Drew with uh, Des Bryant lasted about two days, but the X is still going up, says Mark Ingram. And, well, they had plenty of opportunities to celebrate in the end zone by throwing up the X. This was one of them. Mark Ingram on the screen. Spin move. End zone. Touchdown. Saints up 14-7. There goes your X. 
and then Dez appreciating it really from all over the NFL. Yes, you get all, up the all X, over right? the X going up. Alvin Kamara going to get his turn to take it in and throw it up as well. He's so strong, and people see the small stature, but he is so powerful. He can play so well in those inside runs. Saints up 28 to 7. Here the interception of Andy Dalton, picked off by Marcus Williams. And look at the return. Great this is return. the final seconds of the first half here. Instead of just kind of taking it and he going down, he gets 78 yards later. He's going to give his offense really just one shot Eight before seconds. they'd have you to got kick got a one field crack goal, right? at it. One crack at the end zone. And that's all Drew Brees and Michael Thomas would need. You know what was really smart there is, is don't play any press coverage or touch anybody no. off the line of scrimmage. Just let Mike Thomas play run a real free. soft zone against the most accurate quarterback in the history of the NFL. That worked out swimmingly. You know what we're calling up to throw up the X? T H R E A U X. Throw up the X. I like for it. New Orleans. I like that. Might Clever. as well. Yeah, Clever. Really like that's what they're calling it there. Okay. <laughs> Third quarter, 38 to 7. Why don't you just let Drew Brees get one on the ground as well? Let's really do the air. Yeah. He yeah. does love jumping that's over the ground. That's right there. It is, and that. Uh, Do they make posters anymore? That'd be a great poster. It would be. Call means. Fifty-one points for the Saints, and what Drew Brees uh, thinks is their most, uh, their best game yet. I think this was probably our most complete game thus far. Uh, really, all the way around, offense, defense. Um, uh, especially to come on the road after a, a big, mm -hmm. you know, emotional victory at home yeah. against the Rams last week. Um, you know, we felt like this was going to be a really tough test against a really talented team coming off a of bye week, and just you know, it never gets any easier, you know, from week to week. But uh, just put together, a, I think, a, a really good performance all the way around. Um, it's still about execution. It's still about doing all the little things that, that are result in winning football. Do you think it's a problem with this game? It's again, I'm not going to get into any. Uh, Observations right now today with that. Uh, what I mean, looking at the stats, they're on pace to break the record most yards allowed in the season. At what point would you consider coaching changes or anything like that? Again, I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. Well, they're talking about it today in Cincinnati as we bring in our NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport. The Bengals defense giving up over 500 total yards for the third straight week. Ian, so changes had to be made. They had to be made. They were made this morning. Terrell Austin, the defensive coordinator, who Marvin Lewis actually brought in uh, to help this defense, taking over for Paul Gunther, who's in his own difficult situation in Oakland, obviously. Uh, and this is a guy that some viewed in Terrell Austin as a possible successor to Marvin Lewis. Instead, just based on the performance of the defense, he ends up getting fired after three uh, really troubling games. And now Marvin Lewis himself is essentially going to serve as the defensive coordinator, I would expect Jim Haslett, linebackers coach, to have a little bit of an elevated role. Probably not a different title, but an elevated role. And, you know, Marvin Lewis actually just met with reporters a couple seconds ago and said he wanted to shake things up, uh, said, yeah, he's taking ownership of the situation uh, by calling the plays. And he felt that this is a team that could go to the playoffs, so wanted to make this move now uh, to, again, kind of shake things up and give the team a chance. All right, Ian Rappaport there. Uh, Stick tight. We're going to be right back to you here. But want to get to another uh, another look at the Saints offense. I mean, yeah, the points per game. They are now first in the NFL right now, averaging just over 36 a contest. Over 400 yards on offense as well. And they're rushing TDs. Actually, number one in the league with 15 at the moment. All right, let's get back to the highlights here. Here we go. Seahawks and Chargers. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. That Seahawks. Seahawks didn't play the uh, Chargers. They, they played the other go. team from uh, Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> Let's bring up that Rams highlight if we yeah. can here. Yeah. This is. Uh, I mean, I can tell you the Chargers are going to win this they're game. They're going to win yeah. this game. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. No. Yeah. Don't know what's uh, going on here. Yeah, there was a penalty on that one, but it was against the. All right. Uh, but I'll tell you, Melvin Gordon was as good yesterday as he was in that game. <laughs> yeah, he was. So. Indeed, he was. Yeah, he was. You know, we do it all here at the aftermath. We call it the throwback. <laughs> okay, there it is. Oh, there we go. The Seahawks game. Okay. We're talking about Seahawks and the Rams from the Coliseum. Of course, a very difficult week here in the Los Angeles community. Moment of silence for the victims of the mass shooting at Thousand Oaks. And then the Rams taking off as they usually do on offense here. Todd Gurley into the end zone behind big Andrew Whitworth. And Cooper Cup, man, he has dealt with some injuries this season. The concussion, oh. the knee injury earlier. And oh. here... Now another knee injury. This one expected to keep him out for the remainder of the season. We'll get to Ian for more on that here in a second. Third quarter, Rams up 20 to 14. Five minutes to go here in the third, and Russell Wilson oh, had a 
receiver open, but then we get an unsportsmanlike conduct here on Dante Fowler prolonging a drive. Dante told me that uh, he said a little something to the ref that he should not have said. Thought the ref was a little touchy, but a whole lot of emotions going on in this game. Bring it down just outside the red zone, and look at this throw and catch here. Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett. Just Far absolutely hang beautiful. up in the air. Farley Lockett's had a really good year for them. And what, a, and what a throw. And Russell really kept him in this game. Let's go to the fourth quarter now. Rams back up by five. Six minutes to play. Oh, and now look at Dante Fowler atoning. Just gets the ball out of Russell's hands. Ends up recovering it as well. And the Rams are back in business. Under six minutes to play. First loss fumble since week two for the Seahawks and the Rams take advantage. Next play, in fact, or you know, fly goes. sweep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, once or twice. Yeah, I've seen Robert, that. Robert Woods might have to play tackle from time to time, though. The way oh, he's blocks. awesome. He, really he, good. It's incredible. Pass, 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 early for block. a score as well. Pass Absolutely. downfield with a block. Okay, so the Rams get it done. They will head to Mexico City or Colorado Springs first, right? Yes. But Mexico City uh, this week, 9-1, and one, as will the Chiefs, which will be a pretty darn good game. But let's start with what we saw at the Coliseum here. Steve, you were there. Yes, again, Todd Gurley, the run game really well, but Man, the Rams got to figure out a way to stop the run. What, 270 yards? And this, they gave was, up? and this was concerning. I mean, all the positives that players and coaches talked about after this game, the two negatives were the penalties, and they really assisted Seattle with a lot of dumb penalties in this game. But this run defense is continuing to get hit. They're getting hit inside, they're getting outside. I actually had uh, someone tell me they, they probably are going to have to tweak the scheme because they know going forward, teams are seeing some things on film where they're really moving. Sue and Brockers out. They're running up the middle. You see there, he took it, bounced it. That's Penny, bounced it off tackle. By the way, Rashad Penny was fantastic yesterday. His vision and his pop uh, was really good. But this is something they've talked about addressing it. We know last week they missed a day of practice because of the fires. But then moving forward, they have got to, to fix this run defense. they got a lot of money on the inside on that D-line. Yeah. Linebackers, though, have got to step up and make some plays. That yep. was an issue, Jim. We no, saw that. No question about it. The linebackers, particularly <laughs> in setting the edge, they were, they were out of position often, which allowed the cutback. And talking to Mark Barron after that game, the one thing he said to me is that we've got to correct these mistakes. And I said, are we talking about communication mistakes here? And he said, no. We're talking about guys being in position, being in the right fit in this defense, those sorts of things. It's getting late in the year to keep saying, we have to fix this. We have to fix this. They've been saying this for a while now, yep. and it hasn't happened. So it's not just the interior guys. Their linebackers are out of position often on these runs, creating lanes on the outsides for guys to bounce it or cut back. Is this the type of thing that can be fixed in season, DJ? Well, look, run fits. I mean, yeah. that's elementary football. Right. I mean, that should be not that complicated to be able to figure that out, get guys in the right gaps and be able yeah. to hold up there. Sometimes just a physical beat, though, as well. That can, can be a challenge. But this offense just continues to bail this defense yeah, does. out time in and time out. It's just I, I don't know if that's sustainable. Get in the postseason, you're going to have a day where you're not on. You need your defense to be able to step up and help you out, and I'm concerned about it. And even more concerning now is the injury to Cooper Cup, and let's get back to our NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport for more on that. Uh, looks like this knee injury will sideline him for the rest of the season, Ian. Yeah, he is going to be out for this season, and this is something that the Rams knew pretty clearly last night. There was a lot of uh, sort of sadness and frustration for a player that everybody loves, that he's not going to be able to, to help on the field, and uh, this was one it does seem like they knew right away, and if you think about it, though, obviously it's bad to lose a very good player, but this is an offense that does have a lot of other good players. I mean, uh, Brandon Cooks for one, Robert Woods, uh, they, they got a lot of other guys who can kind of step in here. Uh, and, and maybe take his place a little bit. So it's bad. And by the way, they've also played with him, without him for a couple of games this year when he was dealing with the MCL injury, which is actually a separate deal from this one. So it's not good news, obviously. Uh, they're not going to go in against the Chiefs uh, full strength, but at the least it's something that they've dealt with before. Indeed. And uh, also uh, here in L.A., the Chargers are dealing with an injury to one of their linebackers, Denzel Perryman. What's the severity there? Yeah, Denzel Perryman, I'm told, is going to be out for the season for the Chargers. He's dealing with an injury to his LCL and also an injury to his hamstring. Actually going to need hamstring surgery. From what I, had told, what I was told, the hamstring actually came off the bone. His recovery is probably three to four months. Uh, should be around. There should be March when he's able to do football activities again. But that's not going to help the Chargers right now. Maybe not a household name, but certainly a huge, huge part 
of this Chargers defense is so in that they are going to miss. Okay, Ian, thanks very much. Our NFL Network insider uh, here with us on some injury news uh, to the two teams here in L.A. And, DJ, obviously you're around that team all the time now yep. calling their games on the radio. Uh, just, just when we think we might start to see Joey Bosa again, now you lose a key piece on defense. How do they regroup? Well, he's a fantastic player, does not miss a lot of tackles, and has been a key member of this defense. But what they've done is they've played Adrian Phillips a lot. They're playing with their dime defense, even against base looks, getting extra safety on the field. He had nine tackles in the game yesterday after you had the injury very early on in this ballgame to Perriman. So it'll be interesting to see what Gus Bradley decides to do personnel-wise uh, with this injury and trying to figure out where they go next. Yeah, they play without Perryman a lot as well. Yeah. Quickly for the Ram for Cooper Cup's loss. Uh, Josh Reynolds, uh, who, who played a lot when Cooper Cup was hurt earlier this year, has been fantastic. They, yeah. they really like him. Um, they'll move Robert Woods around a little between slot and outside, the things that they did with Cooper Cup. So that's kind of the shift that they can make. But Josh Reynolds is a player who stepped up and played very well. Right, and because the Rams are almost exclusively in 11 personnel, which means they yep. have three wide receivers out there, and they ask those guys to block quite a bit yep. in the run game Which as they well. do, they, which they, they do which very they do. well. The thing well. is, Josh Reynolds is not as precise a route runner as Cooper Cup. No. And yeah. then we'll see in the run game. One thing you might see is more of these young tight ends, Higby and Everett. And uh, both of them scored uh, on Sunday yep. at the Coliseum. Who okay, doesn't let's, score for the Rams? <laughs> that's, that's a great point. Let's see if we can get Andrew Whitworth one. Uh, when we come back here in the aftermath, Patrick Mahomes may have ended his streak of 300-yard pass games, but the Chiefs' win streak keeps rolling. However, are they still the team to beat in the AFC West? Plus, Baker Mayfield, what did he complete, 13 straight passes to start the game on Sunday? We'll ask former Brown Joe Thomas just how dangerous Baker is when Joe joins us live next. Jared Goff trying to score. Once I started looking for car insurance, it was a no-brainer. I switched to Geico and saved hundreds. That's a win. But it's not the only reason I switched. The Geico app makes it easy to manage my policy. I can pay my bill, add a new driver, or even file a claim. Woo! Hey now, that's a win-win. Thank you. Switch to Geico. It's a win-win. To celebrate the Grinch movie, IHOP has all new Grinch pancakes, mint hot chocolate, and kids eat free from 4 to 10 p.m. Right, Mr. Grinch? Get IHOP's new Grinch pancakes and see the Grinch in theaters. I want to give my family a great entertainment system. Where do I start? At home. Oh, yeah? Yeah, with us. An in-home consultation. Really? And it's free. Free expertise at your place? That's quite a stocking stuffer. I've heard a lot about Samsung 4K QLED TVs. They're great. And when we look at your space, we'll know how to build the best system for you. I want to give Santa some real competition this year. Shall we set up that consultation then? Yeah, let's do it. I wonder if they come in through the chimney. We're more than just $5 medium one-topping pizzas. Stuffed garlic knots, breadsticks, bone-out wings, pasta, and new Cinnabon mini rolls. We're the $5 lineup with the best sides for your pizza. $5 each. Choose two or more, $5 each. No one out pizzas the hut. Welcome to Mitsubishi. Want to take a test drive? I love it. Mind if my daughter joins us? Not yeah, at all. Great. Let's test out the sound system. Sure. That sounds good. Lay, lay on the go. I'm looking all glamour. And my 2019 Mitsubishi Outlander. Check one, check two, check three. We all can ride because the third row seat can't get over something in blind spot. Don't work hard, happy when you got a blind spot. <laughs> get $3,000 cash back or 0% APR for 72 months plus $1,000 cash back on select 2018 models. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. With all the top designer brands under one roof, our expert stylists have you covered from head to toe. At Men's Warehouse, select designer suits are 329 plus it's buy one, get one free on select items. This November, join Men's Warehouse and the Movember Foundation in raising awareness for men's health. Wrangler jeans are made for those who roll with the times. Like him. And her. And these two. New styles, great fits. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to game day, Prime. Every dog has a day. He had all day to throw. Looking for the long ball. And a touchdown. Two defenders. He makes the catch. Steps across the pylon. That's textbook. So happy to be here with three Hall of Famers. <laughs> yeah! Everything you want to see, if you ball, you get the call. What's up, baby? Next week, I want you all to wear your Hall of Fame jackets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, back here live with you on the Aftermath, presented by Farmers Insurance. Baker Mayfield looking to snap a four-game losing streak for the Browns first quarter. Mayfield, look at this throw here, rolling right off the back foot on the money mm. to Hollywood Higgins. 28-yard touchdown, Browns up 7-0. By a little time, he didn't have to do much of that. He did a nice job of protection with Baker Mayfield. Julio Jones, beginning of the day, searching for a receiving milestone. Second quarter, he's going to find it. Down 7-3, Matt Ryan finds Julio, 30-yard gain, and with that catch, he passes Calvin Johnson to become the fastest player to reach 10,000 career receiving yards in NFL history. He did it 11 games faster than Calvin did. Wow. Yeah, pretty impressive. And then they're going to let him, on this drive, finish it off in the end zone. He was only covered by six people on that play. And still powers in <laughs> for the score. Hey, we got a touchdown streak here for Julio Jones. Back Two straight back. games. Right. This is big time here. Falcons up 10-7. Uh-oh. Boy, Nick Chubb. How about the second-round pick out of Georgia? Next Browns drive. Mayfield here to Chubb. He'll take this one in. 13-yard touchdown catch. First career TD reception. And remember, they were worried about getting him on the field because of Carlos Hyde. They wanted him on the field, but I don't know. Haley wanted to play. But more. look at this. 92 yard touchdown run for Nick Chubb. That is the longest run in Cowboy Boston. was doing a swan I know, dive. I've not seen that type like of block before. You know? Hey, he's not going to go all for holding when you're <laughs> doing a Superman pose. Terrific. The Browns go on to win it 28 to 16. Greg Williams gets his first win as the interim head coach. What a rookie class. Fantastic. And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. <laughs> I care to expand on that. I just woke up feeling real dangerous. Yeah. And joining us now here to talk a little Browns football, a former Brown and 11 year vet, spent his entire career there. Joe Thomas is with us. What's going on, Joe? How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. Uh, pleasure, man. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Well, you heard uh, Baker Mayfield talk about how he woke up feeling dangerous. I, I love it, right? Uh, what, were you, what are your impressions of how he's been playing here for this team? Yeah, the last two weeks he's been playing great. Obviously, yesterday he played fantastic. I think he had as many incompletions as he did touchdowns with three, which was just amazing. And he's operating that offense efficiently. You know, what I saw yesterday from Baker was the Baker Mayfield that we all fell in love with when he was at Oklahoma in college. And I think the future is really bright for him in Cleveland. Well, Joe, this is Steve White here. You talk about how Baker performed the past two games. That's with Greg Williams as his head coach and Freddie Kitchens calling plays you know, if we continue to see a trend like this, and you're up there in Cleveland, do you see any way that Greg Williams could possibly hang on to this head coaching job full time? I definitely see there's a chance. You know, this is his opportunity to audition for the job, and if they continue rolling, I'm sure that's going to make John Dorsey have a really tough decision for him. Obviously, when you're the GM, you've got maybe a short list of three or four guys that you've been talking to and you've been thinking about, but uh, there's no nothing that says you can't just hire the guy that you got there right now. Joe, what's the uh, what's just the overall vibe in that building right now? I mean, it seems like Baker Mayfield's kind of one of those guys who just brings a lot of energy and a lot of juice to the organization. It just seems like a little bit, little bit more buzz here with this football team. Well, Baker is obviously an exciting guy. He's a great personality, and he played fantastic last weekend. And he's had some excellent games for him this season. And there's definitely a lot of energy right now. I mean, three wins right now. Most teams wouldn't be too excited about that. But the Browns <laughs> haven't won a lot in the last few years. <laughs> I was part of that the last couple of years. And uh, there's definitely a positive feeling right now with all the young talent that this roster has, especially when we think we found uh, the franchise quarterback in Cleveland and Baker Mayfield. That's a lot of room for optimism. And a franchise running back perhaps as well in the rookie Nick Chubb who has the 92-yard <laughs> touchdown run but we got to give some credit to the guys up front on that one right Absolutely. Obviously, the, the offensive line's job is to get the run started. We're responsible for the first three to four yards, and then after that, it's kind of receivers blocking, and then after that, the running back's on his own. And the thing that's cool about Nick Chubb is he's that big punishing runner in between the tackles, but he somehow still has that top-end speed to be able to take it 90 yards and outrun the defense. Joe, Steve White again. Look, you talk about offensive lines. We're seeing the past, I believe, four games, Andrew Luck down in Indianapolis has not been sacked. We're seeing Tennessee's offensive line give a great combination run and pass protection. Looking around the league, what about some of the play of the offensive lines, and what about those two teams specifically as they're trying to make some headway in the AFC South? 
Yeah, well, Andrew Luck is doing some great things right now in Indianapolis. Like you mentioned, he was a guy that was hit and sacked way too much early on in his career. Obviously, he had that shoulder injury, but he's playing well, and I think he's really adapting to this offense, understanding that for him to be great, for him to survive a long time in the NFL, he needs to get the ball out of his hands quickly. He needs to be like Peyton Manning, right? Peyton Manning was never sacked. It didn't matter who that offensive line was in front of him. If the quarterback's getting the ball at on time and he's throwing it on the money, he's got an opportunity to be great and he's not going to be sacked and he's going to make that offensive line look great hey joe is a six-time all pro in the nfl uh obviously we trust your judgment who's the best left tackle in football right now Ooh, that's a good question i, I love taylor lewan i think he's a fantastic player there in uh, tennessee and he's a fun guy to watch and he's got a great personality too so maybe i'm a little bit biased and they had a big win over the patriots in this one hey uh joe you you look you look like you're still in pretty darn good shape here, man. Uh, you're obviously uh, uh, keeping yourself in the I want to know, his weight. I wanna know what he's weighing right now. What, Joe, what are you weighing right now, man? You yeah. look like you're about 250. Yeah, you're pretty close. I'm 255. Actually, I dropped about 50 pounds after I retired. That was like my number one thing I was looking forward to because I knew I could take some of the pain away from my knees and my back if I was a little bit lighter. And uh, it's definitely helped. My knees are feeling a lot better than they did uh, last year at this time when I was 300 pounds. (laughs) Uh, I bet. Hey, lastly here, tell us about what you're doing with Ranger Country Heroes Hunt. Yeah, right, right now I'm working with Polaris Ranger and we're promoting leak hunting and mountain preserve and we're trying to raise $100,000 for leak to be able to expand their outdoor recreation program for veterans. It's an outstanding place in Pennsylvania. It's 400 acres run by vets, owned by vets, and it's a great chance for vets when they're coming back that are injured and wounded to be able to have this retreat, this outdoor retreat where they can share their time together and be able to heal from uh, combat for a lot of these guys are coming back from overseas and this is an opportunity for them to get together with their families and get that healing process started a hey, great time to talk about it here as we celebrate the nfl's commitment uh, year-long commitment to salute to service joe thomas taking some time to join us here in the aftermath we certainly appreciate it joe thanks for having me guys Still to come for you on the aftermath, it was a milestone Sunday in the NFL. You saw the one that Julio Jones, his latest achievement, but Drew Brees continuing to make his mark on the record books. We'll talk about it next on the aftermath. I'm Chris, and I lost 120 pounds on Nutrisystem. Listen up, guys. Want to shed a few pounds? Got a beer belly? Can't fit into your pants? Then you need Nutrisystem for men. Lose up to 18 pounds and 8 inches overall in your first month. Money back guarantee. I'm Essex, and I lost 43 pounds on Nutrisystem. Real guys, real results. Put down the pie. Pick up the phone and get with the program today. Order your 28-day plan now and save 40% off every program. That's 40% off breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks for a limited time. Save. 40%. Plus, get one week of all new NutriPro shakes, packed with 20 grams of protein to help shrink your gut free. The food was delicious. This is perfect for men, especially guys who don't want to cook. We'll even throw in FedEx shipping free. So get off the couch. Lose up to 18 pounds and 8 inches overall in your first month. It's not that hard. You eat the food, you lose the weight. Go online or call 877-907-FIRM and get free shakes plus 40% off every program. Hi, I'm Raymond Denon, Vice President of Optima Tax Relief. If you're in debt to the IRS, there's a lot you need to know. Starting with rule number one, don't mess with the IRS. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, even take your home or business. That's all true. But it's also true that there's a way out. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. It's one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered. If you qualify, you could save thousands, even tens of thousands. Nobody knows this program like us, the experts at Optima Tax Relief. We have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, and we've resolved over $500 million in tax debt for our clients. We'll stand between you and the IRS and fight to get you the best deal possible. Don't mess with the IRS. For tax help you need, for tax help you can trust, call Optima for a free consultation. For your free consultation, call 1-800-971-5606. That's 1-800-971-5606. Tonight on NFL Total Access, the Saints marched on, the Rams rebounded, and panic for the Patriots, plus a preview of Monday night's matchup between the Giants and 49ers. Tonight, 6 Eastern. NFL Game Pass. Go get it! 
full game replays. Threading the needle! Coach's film. He's mugging the A-gap. Condensed games. Dives into the end zone! NFL Films Archive. I like this kind of party! NFL Game Pass, now at a new lower price. Duncan just protected his family with a $500,000 life insurance policy. How much do you think it cost him? $100 a month? $75? $50? Actually, Duncan got his $500,000 for under $28 a month. Less than a dollar a day. His secret? Select Quote. In just minutes, a Select Quote agent will comparison shop nearly a dozen highly rated life insurance companies. Call now, 800-245-6130. This Halloween, it's so exciting! Give your kids a monstrous treat. Smile with the perfect family movie night. When is this thing starting? There's lots of fun for everyone. Bring it on! I am king of family fun! Your kids will love it. <laughs> hotel Transylvania 3 includes two Hotel Transylvania mini movies. Now on demand. Rent or own this movie today with Fios On Demand. All right, back here live on the Aftermath. We are now just, uh, what, three, four days away from Thursday night football kicking off week 11 in the NFL. It's the Packers and Seahawks up in Seattle, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. NFL game day kickoff gets you started at 6. You can see it all right here on NFL Network, on Fox, and streaming on Prime Video. How about some week 10 milestones to catch you up on here? We showed you this in the highlight. In that Browns-Falcons game, Julio Jones entered needing just 13 yards to reach 10,000 for his career. He gets them all right here in this 30-yard reception from Matt Ryan and is now the fastest player in NFL history to reach 10K receiving yards. He will pass Calvin Johnson as the fastest to do it. Calvin, as you're going to see here, did it in 115 games. Julio now 11 games faster in 104 games. That's some, some pretty good companies in there. The one thing I know about Julio based on conversations I've had with him in the past, he would trade all of this for a victory in a Super Bowl. He's all about the team, not about himself. So, so would Calvin Johnson. Well. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> Let's get to Arrowhead and KC where the Cardinals are trying to pull off a comeback here. Late game, uh, Josh Rosen gets a pass off here to Larry Johnson, or Larry Fitzgerald. And uh, who then on this reception passes Terrell Owens for the second most receiving yards in NFL history. He's been 16,000. He's been the answer to my trivia question of if you had your, your, your children's lives were on the line and a catch had to be made and only pick one person in the history of the NFL, I think I would take Larry Fitzgerald in those hands. Wow, he would appreciate I, that. I think you might be current, right? Or ever. You know, I have not seen in my lifetime anybody with stronger hands than Larry Fitzgerald. Still a ways to go, though, to catch up to Jerry Rice at uh, 28, 22,000 yards. Full disclosure, I'm doing a book with Larry Fitzgerald, and I can tell you getting the number two for him is a big deal. That's he knows awesome. he's not going to catch the GOAT. And but Terrell it means Owens a lot. acknowledging, um, hey, say congrats to Larry Fitzgerald on becoming his second all time in receiving. Nice to know that I am now in good company. <laughs> The next Indeed. person you meet that doesn't like Larry Fitzgerald will be the first, by the way. I would I agree. Mean, he's I would agree with that. Statement. Loved and respected. Absolutely. Here's a guy fairly universally loved and respected, Drew Brees. There's another one. With this <laughs> touchdown pass here, the screen pass to Mark Ingram passes Brett Favre for the second most passing touchdowns in NFL history. And afterwards, Drew Brees talking about the record. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that, he played a long time. <laughs> And uh, he's one of the greatest of all time. Um, listen, it's an honor to be able to play this game and to have been able to play it as long as I have and been able to be a part of some of the teams I've been a part of, especially this one. And so we're, we're having fun. I'm having fun. I'm just going to stay in the moment and just enjoy every day. Oh. Certainly nice to have it happen in a win. Drew Brees there. Now one touchdown more than Brett Favre for the most in regular season NFL history. Peyton Manning uh, with 30 more still at the top there, 539. He might get that the way he might playing. get it this season. Yeah, yeah we still got some, some games to work with here. How about the acknowledgement of that milestone here from Joe Theismann, Drew Brees, the league MVP. You know, the thing as we go forward here, when you think about guys like Drew Brees, Larry Fitzgerald, these others, I mean, they're so special. I don't know if we realize that once they're gone, what we're going to miss. And so even as people who cover this league every day, yeah. I have such an appreciation for them that, that really in some ways as, as a writer reporter, I'm trying to smell the roses a little bit and appreciate what they've done before they're gone. Absolute appreciation for Drew Brees. But if Patrick Mahomes 
<laughs> breaks the <laughs> the passing touchdown single season record. Drew might break. The he MVP? might break the completion percentage record. So he go. Yeah, go I mean, Drew is he is stacking them up this year. Just I mean, one interception trophy. as well. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for Drew Brees. Cool. Yep. It's been really impressive the run that he has been on. Congratulations to Drew Brees and Julio Jones and Larry Fitzgerald on those milestones. Coming up, we got another live hour of the aftermath on the way. I feel like the Cowboys figured out the blueprint, right? Zeke, Zeke, a little more Zeke. Look, coming right back on the aftermath after this. NFL game day kickoff. Our crew previews Thursday night showdown One, two, three, four. as the Packers take on the Seahawks. Things have to change this week for the touchdown. NFL game day kickoff Thursday at 6, live on NFL Network. In sports, as in business, there is no substitute for victory. It starts with getting the talent you need, tailoring a game plan that fits your goals, and having the team to achieve them. It starts with a game changer. Human resources that are helping over 15,000 businesses get the competitive edge they need to win. Join us and see what we can do for your business. Trinet, incredible, starts here. I really didn't expect to learn so many interesting details. Ancestry DNA was able to tell me where my father's family came from in Colombia. They pinpointed the Colombian and Ecuador region and then there's a whole new Andean region. And that was incredibly exciting because I really didn't know that. It just brings it home how deep my roots are and it connects me to them and to their spirit and to their history. This holiday, give the gift that's connected millions to a deeper family story. Order your kit at Ancestry.com. How much horsepower does this thing got? Doing great, Dad. Looking good, babe. Are you filming? At Booking.com, we can't guarantee you'll be any good at that water jet thingy. It's so good! <laughs> but we can guarantee the best price on a hotel like this one. Or any home, boat, treehouse, yurt, whatever. Get the best price on homes, hotels, and so much more. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. This thing. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. What? <laughs> How did you know? Right? <laughs> Hiring, it's a big deal. Finding the right candidates can take up lots of your time and energy. But not on Indeed. Millions of great people are using Indeed every single day. People with every possible combination of skill and experience. And with filters to help you find them faster, whatever type of candidates you're looking for, you'll find them on Indeed. Accelerate your hiring even more with a $50 credit to start your first job post with premium placement on Indeed. Want to dominate your fantasy league this year? The running back is back. Our experts help with insights and analysis all season long. He is a one-man offensive attack. NFL Fantasy Live, today at 5 on NFL Network. Start your Sundays with NFL Network. Yeah! We're on first with Good Morning Football Weekend. Let's talk big picture. Then the crew at game day morning gets you ready for kickoff. That dude looks so good. NFL Sunday begins Sunday at 7, only on NFL Network. Hand off. Elliott works his way through and walks the dog. Touchdown, Elliott. Fires for the end zone. Oh, touchdown. A Kansas City Chiefs record. Elliott. Hurdle. Look at this. Yeah, eat him up. Looks left, has man front pile on, caught Mike Thomas. Brady devoured. Patriots dropped to 7 and 3. There goes Joe Hand, 5, touchdown, Shabba Lama Hub. Wide open was Eric Ebron, that's his third touchdown. Gurley to 10, Gurley to 5, Gurley Pater, touchdown LA. Baker rolls right, fired, touchdown. When I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous.
All right, Baker, feeling a little dangerous. You can be my wingman anytime, man. Here we go. Welcome into another live hour of the Aftermath presented by Farmers Insurance. Brett Lewis, Jim Trotter, Daniel Jeremiah, Steve Weich. What's going on, fellas? I'm What's jealous. up, man? You guys ready? To... I'm jealous. I thought I was your wingman. <laughs> well, I can't, see, I can't make all, four, all three of you. You know, we... I, so so excuses, Baker, excuses. Huh? It is. Okay. It is. Let's get back to the highlights here in the aftermath before Steve takes a swipe at me over here. Cowboys and Eagles, speaking Whoa, of taking speaking some, of it. some Why? swipes here. A little pregame action between these two bitter NFC East rivals. All right, Ezekiel Elliott, man, he was on fire in this one today. Second quarter. How oh, about the hurdle? You just went Edwin Moses. That, that was beautiful that. form. That was nice for him. Right All the way down to the Eagles. Eight. Check it out that? again. I feel bad for Trey Sullivan. It's a tough play, man. Keep your head up. Yeah, well, that's a good way to start, right? Good song. Can't hit what you can't see. Yeah, it there. was a good song, too. How about in their next possession, already up 6-3, Dak Prescott, one yard rushing TD. They let 13-3 at the half. Now 13-6, Eagles fighting back. Carson Wentz to Zach Ertz. How hot was this connection last night? What did he catch, like 40 balls last night? It sure felt like it. And then the nice salute to service right there for the celebration. Let's go fourth quarter. Trading scores here for these teams. Tied at 13. Not anymore. Dak to Zeke. Touchdown, Cowboys. Look about everybody doing that read action of UJ yeah, all man. with that motion. They all took it. Yep. Seven-yard score. Cowboys on top until Zach Ertz back into the end zone. A couple more photos, and we're tied at 20. Under six to play in a ball game. That's Allen too Hurts. easy. That mm. is too easy. 23-yard reception down to the Eagles. Nine. Three plays later, Zeke finding his way to pay dirt. One-yard touchdown. Cowboys back on top, 27 to 20. 151 on the ground for Zeke. Another 36 through the air. And this is the last shot here for Philly. No timeouts. Final seconds. Zach Ertz desperately. Trying to lateral it to Golden Tate, but to no avail. The Cowboys, left for dead a week ago. Are they back? They get the victory. And let's take a look at some of the numbers for this one. Uh, in the 27-20 victory over the Cowboys, Zeke 187 scrimmage yards. Mari Cooper, six catches, 75 yards. At one time he had like five catches for 12 yards or something crazy. And I was following this on the airplane. <laughs> How well, that there, but there were other times that he was open and Dak did not see him or at least did not yeah. deliver the ball. He, he played very well. Now for the Eagles, you're not seeing a big rushing number there for them. Again, just 71 rushing yards on the ground. Uh, Carson over 360 through the air, but it wasn't enough for the Eagles. Starting with myself, all of us, uh, you know, we just look at ourselves in the mirror. And um, are we are we doing enough? Are we giving enough? Um, each week, it's a strain. I mean, you have to you have to strain yourself to make plays. I mean, that's just the way this game is. And uh, uh, we didn't do enough of that today. And, and that's that's the disappointing thing. This one hurt. So I know um, we got a lot of veterans in there, a lot of leadership. And, uh, you know, like you said, like Coach said, um, and I'm going to keep echoing the same thing, we all got to look in the mirror. What can we do differently? What, where can we be better? Um, and we realized a lot of people are going to want to write us off at this point, and uh, now it's just time to, to play ball and, and try and go shock some people. Eagles have lost their last three home games. Yeah. Just don't, if you're yeah, defending Super good. Bowl champion, that's not the recipe to get back. Cowboys, though, on the road, uh, as you're looking here, the first four games, not very good, right? Week 10, that's, not, that's how you get it done. 410 yards of total offense. They're able to run the ball. The, the number on the bottom is the one. Yeah, zero turnovers, no question about it. They had eight in the first four games on the road. Zero in the win over the Eagles. Let's stay in the NFC East, check in on the Redskins. They were down in Tampa taking on the Bucks here. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Second most giveaways in football this year with 21, and here you go. Second and seven, Fitz. Well, he led this Bucks team up and down the field, right? But Ooh, there's a pick. Nice Josh catch. Norman, terrific effort on the interception and the return. It's going to go back 32 yards. Fitz finished with 406 yards. Yeah, over 500 yards of offense. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Come away and with he only He will three. start yeah, next week, good. by the way, according to Dirk Cutter uh, this morning. Third and five here for Alex Smith. Look at him back out of the pocket and find his wide out Josh Doxson. Big kind of time coming play. On as a early big Neal. time play. Early Neal touchdown right there. Redskins get the victory 16 to 3. Josh Norman with a couple of words for the fans. I feel like we play better in our world. I'm not going to lie. Like, gosh, man. It just seems like the true fans and favorite ones, they really be with us on the road. And we, we feed off of that. When we go into the home stands, it just seems like, you know, it's like an open bubble. You know, I was like a other team's turf or something. 
You, know, you hear more of them than you do us. And if something bad happens, they suck. Sit back in their seat and they boo. Like, it's kind of crazy because the first couple of years um, I've been here, you, you would see sellouts and see people all you know happy and excited and all for the Red Suns. But now you go around to the whole NFC East teams, the Phillies, the, the Giants, and you know even Dallas. They sold out. If even the Chiefs, they cheering for their team, regardless, good or bad or indifferent. They still showing up each and every week. You know, going hard. And even the Giants, when they was one and six, you know, they had a sellout crowd. It was all in there, packed still. You know, we come back to our home. It seems like guys just they don't really care. They just blew everything and not really behind us. We don't really feel that. And I'm tired of it, really. I mean, play all the games on the road. If you ask me. Yikes. <laughs> oh, is that going to be in the season ticket renewal? No, no I, 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 don't, I don't think no. that is. What, what do you guys make of what Josh Norman had to say? Oh, it, it's it's, it's not going to go well. I mean, look, he can, he can get five interceptions. He's going to get booed at home. If you thought they booed before, look, when people pay their money, they can, they can pretty Whatever much, they I'm want, not going to yeah. say completely behave like they want to, but if they want to boo, that's They're not unique to, to Washington. To but I'm saying there are probably other players in the league that feel but, that way. But when you compare them to their rivals' fan bases and say they're better and they support their teams more, this is a major no-no. It is not that is not going to go well for Josh Norman. No, and I mean the bottom line is you have to give your fans something to cheer, and at times Washington has not done that. At times. <laughs> for years. They're, le- I, they're leading the division, so that's why well, I say at times. Time. Exactly. So you've got to give them something to cheer about. But the funny thing is, like, I, this year I've heard Giants fans booing their team at home. Cowboys. I've heard Cowboys fans booing their team the at league. home. Happens I've heard Eagles week. fans Absolutely. booing their team last night. Right. So I'm not sure what games Josh is listening to or watching at this point because all home teams, if they play poorly over a You're period of time, are going to get booed. Go play for the Jets right now, Josh. Yes. You know, go, go play for a lot of teams. They're getting booed. Go play for, go the, play Raiders. for the Raiders. Yeah. Oh, there were some boos in Oakland. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, all right, so let's get a look, though. I mean, to Norman's point, I mean, they are the – Best team in the NFC East right now. They got that going. Is that for damning with faint praise? In the East. What's that? Is that damning with faint yeah. praise? Uh, I almost I apologize. Sure. You said that. So uh, let's take a look at what the NFC East looks like after the win over the Bucks. The Redskins now six and three, a two-game lead over the Cowboys and Eagles there, uh, and, and and so it feels like they are in control of this division. They certainly control their own destiny in this division, but still plenty of division games left hanging out there right now. Uh, Jim, which NFC East team do you have the most confidence in? Let me do oh. your favorite, Jim. Uh, you know I'm talking about the Giants. Let's just talk about the Giants. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about those. Uh, all right. Look, they're not out of it yet. If it takes nine wins to win the division, they can still do it. Yeah, Key number there, there nine wins, as you said. The last time a team won the NFC East with fewer than nine wins was 1982, and that was a strike year. Okay. So where Washington was 8-1. So, look, you've got to get to nine if you go off history. Looking at that, you can say Washington has the best opportunity here because um, right now they play the Giants, they play the Jaguars on their remaining schedule. If we're looking at it on paper, you would say those are two wins, which gets them to what? Gets them to eight. Now they got to find one more win among Houston, Philly two times, or Tennessee. I think they'll find one in there. I think that gets them to nine, and I think that, that Washington ends up winning the division because of that. Interesting thing, though, with Washington with the injuries on the offensive line. You see Correct. that Houston defensive line coming. You know Dallas, what they have, and, and the Eagles get healthy. They can present some problems up front as well. So that would be my one caution there for the Redskins. Also, they got to play the Eagles twice. Now, when you look at the Eagles, I, I, I like their what they have, especially when you look at the quarterback, the head coach, all that. But when you look at the schedule – I don't know how you New get Orleans, around this. When the you, Rams. And, and look where the Houston. New Orleans. Is the so you, if you lose those two games, if you lose New Orleans and you lose the Rams, that means you've got to keep a clean sheet everywhere else, cannot slip up, that including uh, beat Washington twice. So uh, it's a very, very fine line that the Eagles will have to walk right yeah, now. The I mean, Cowboys are in, a, in the same boat. Yeah, you're asking, you're asking right now Dallas and Philadelphia to go on a run, basically. And they have been unable to do that. Dallas yeah. hasn't won back-to-back games all season. So I'm, I'm with Jim. I'm going with Washington. Even though it is beat up, I, you know, of all the teams, I think they can scatter a few wins in here to get to that 9 or 10 win threshold where I just don't see yeah. that with these other teams based on their schedule. Well, you could probably make the argument that they have the best defense in the division yeah. at this point. And the other they thing, do. Well, their defensive line in Washington is nasty. Correct. Yeah, and, and their coaching is very good. But the other thing here is offensively, Jay Gruden understands what he does not have. 
And therefore, yesterday, as he said after the game, I don't care about fantasy football, anything like that. I'm just trying to win a game. So he is going to do, if that means relying on Adrian Peterson in that run game, trying to shorten the game, win it that way, that's what he's going to do at this point. Did it without three starting offensive linemen exactly. uh, for the Redskins. Also down, Jamison Crowder has been out for the last month. So they're finding ways to right. win, and if nothing else, that is. Again, real quick, 500 yards and three points. How is that possible? <laughs> really good scoring defense uh, in turnovers. That, that's, that's pretty much it. When we come back here on the aftermath, the Chargers – just adding to their win streak, but can they challenge the Chiefs for AFC West supremacy? That's the conversation next. Super Chargy. Why do I feel so dry? You made that? We promise to take care of the car. There's no shortcuts in life. If you're going to do something, do it right the first time. Introducing the Triple Promise only at Firestone Complete Auto Care. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. What if numbers tell only half the story? At T. Rowe Price, our experts go beyond the numbers to examine investment opportunities firsthand, like e-commerce spurring cardboard demand, the pursuit of allergy-free peanuts, and mobile payment reaching new markets. This is strategic investing, because your investments deserve the full story. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Going up. Does he come down with it? Touchdown, Seahawks! Caught! Seattle's going to the Super Bowl! Some endings are unforgettable. But Thursday night, Rodgers and the Packers look to write a new script against Russell Wilson, the Seahawks, and their Rockers home crowd. What a play by this defense! Packers, Seahawks, when it's on, it's on. Thursday night football, Thursday at 8 on NFL Network, Fox, and streaming on Prime Video. Picture this. A place where small is a big deal. Where submitting test scores with your application is optional. Somewhere you can earn a bachelor's and master's degree in only five years. And where a private education is affordable. That's just a snapshot of Rosemont College, where the power of small will make a big difference in developing your future. See the full picture at rosemont.edu. It's a brand given life by craftsmen, not machines. With seductive Italian style built for experiences, not showrooms. The Alfa Romeo Giulia. Just one of a family of Alphas, including Stelvio and 4C. Alfa Romeo, the perfect balance of engineering and emotion. Let's get back to the highlights here in the aftermath presented by Farmers Insurance. How about Mike Vrabel? First guy to play for Bill Belichick and then face him as the opposing head coach. And he was well prepared. Already up 7-3. How about this throw and catch your Mariota dropping it in for Corey Davis. Beautiful throw. Yeah, the sideline was working as another defender right there. Just a perfect throw and great catch. Corey Davis had a nice game with uh, Stephon Gilmore in coverage for the majority. Patriots down 27-10 here and, well, <laughs> they, they did stumble uh, pretty much all game, in fact. Titans on win this thing 34 to 10. Brady just 21 to 41. Brable and Belichick with a nice little hug. Certainly felt better inside the winning locker room. And uh, Titans on offense here in this game, as we said, doubling their points per game in the last two weeks. Point differential way up here the last couple of weeks. They were on a three-game losing streak heading into week nine and now one, two straight. So, yeah, it feels pretty good inside that locker room. Congratulations, fellas. I want to tell you, when you stick to the plan and you believe in it, and we talked about serving each other, okay, serving each other when we left this locker room, okay, at the beginning of the game, okay, sometimes your number's not always called. 
Okay, sometimes you don't get the sack. Okay, sometimes you help somebody else. Marcus, get your ass in here and break it down. Love all you guys. For the boys on three. One, two, three. Okay, let's keep it moving here. Chargers and Raiders up in Oakland. Phillip Rivers and the Chargers looking for their sixth straight win here. Second quarter. Rivers, Keenan Allen, touchdown. Little timing rhythm out right there. Nice little dance for Keenan. Drive it. 11-yard score as the Chargers up 10-3. Third quarter, still up 10-3. Rivers here. Is that the same clip from the past four weeks of John Gruden on the sideline? Cut and paste. The last few weeks, in fact. Look at Melvin Gordon. Oh, We're going to take another look at That's a cut and paste right, right there from the past week. Yeah, we even could have seen that in that other highlight. Cut. We had there. 66 <laughs> yard catch and run score. Chargers on to win this one 20 to 6. Gordon, 93 rushing, 72 receiving his seventh straight game with a touchdown in this one. And here's what the Chargers have done in their first nine games this year compared to last year. Yes, the win-loss record dramatically different, uh, but so is the turnover differential, and the points are way up as the Chargers notch their sixth straight victory. We go inside their locker room post game. Every single week, you do a hell of a job of recommitting yourself. Stay committed. Yes, sir. Stick to the plan. Of course. And keep paying the price one week at a time. Yeah, yeah, and let's yeah. see where that takes us at the end of the season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? Now, today is Veterans Day. If you know a veteran, Okay, call, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Let them know how much we appreciate their sacrifice and their service so we can play this great game of football, pursue our goals and dreams in life. Okay, so everybody do that. All right, uh, Antonio Gates. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go together on three. One, two, three. Together. Appreciate those words there from uh, Anthony Lynn. Absolutely. Nice way to send it off after a victory. And, and DJ, we mentioned Melvin Gordon uh, had an outstanding game. He is extremely talented. You're going to see that on, on a clip, and then we'll see he gets some help from his friends as well. No question. They're just playing great football right now. And even though it wasn't the cleanest game for the Chargers, the Stars showed up, and that star was Melvin Gordon. This is a Raiders defense. The first time they met, they gave up a 44-yard touchdown to Austin Eckler on a little dump off. Now you're going to see the Raiders commit. They're going to blitz. They're going to blitz six. Phillip Rivers sees it, as he always does, and just gets the ball out in the flat. Now, you've got Melvin Gordon against their best corner, Gary and Conley, in space. Conley barely gets a, a finger on him. And now you've got a safety with the running back in space. Reggie Nelson didn't even come that close. And then Keenan Allen, you see him right there just making sure there's no chasers to get him home into the end zone. One more look at it here. Watch this. Settle your feet, and once you settle your feet, He's gone. And I want you to see after he gets in the end zone here, there was a Charger fan down there in the end zone with the Melvin Gordon jersey. Loving it! There he is! <laughs> he was so fired up. Look, I got your jersey on. He put it on right before he got in the end zone. Now at the end of the game, you can see, watch the wide receivers. Look at Tyrell Williams That's and awesome. Keenan Allen get after it to clear oh. space here, trying to run out the clock and get a nice 10-yard run there. And this is what I like at the end of the play. Watch this. Two receivers, just got some blocks, a little, little head pat there. They're doing the dirty work. They're embracing doing that dirty work. You see the same things with the Rams when you watch them with their wide receivers. The wide receivers for the Chargers getting after it as well. And I feel like for some reason Melvin Gordon doesn't get mentioned. We talk about Todd Gurley. We see what Kareem Hunt's doing. Melvin Gordon is having a phenomenal season. Yeah, no question. I don't know how you order him right now, but definitely in the top five running backs in the NFL for sure. sure. Yeah, uh, it's just got to stay healthy. Gordon. Oh, absolutely. Big part of their six-game win streak. Chiefs on a bit of a streak themselves. How about... Tyreek Hill with the NFL film sweater? Love it. He told our uh, our field producer, Anthony Biase, that it is his favorite sweatshirt. All right. So here we go. And uh, I, I guess it's good luck, too. Although he's been doing this every game. Tyreek Hill, 37-yard oh. touchdown catch. But how about this? Oh, we didn't show a celebration. Chiefs up. 7-0. There he is. He had a 38-yard catch and then a 37-yard touchdown on that first drive. Set the tone. Second quarter. Chiefs up six. Patrick Mahomes. Back to Tyreek Hill. As another score, 14 yarder. Chiefs go on to win it 26 to 14. He'll finish with 117 yards and a pair of scores. And he, he gets a vintage Chad Ochocinco right there. Bet you got Chad Johnson when he did that back in the Might have been, yeah. Yeah, he got you know, the tribute to Joe Horn, now the tribute to Ocho. Good work working the operating the camera back there, getting some good shots of his teammates. All right, so the last time the Chiefs started 9 and 1, they lost in the wild card back in 2013. That was Andy Reid's first season, right? That was that loss. To the Colts, Great game. Uh, 11 and 5 was in fact a Wild game. terrific game. So actually, the last three times they started nine and one, they lost uh, in the playoffs there in the divisional round in 03 and 95. But right now they're feeling good inside that locker room. We never apologize for uh, two-digit two digit wins, right? We never do that. So we have some things we can work on. 
So let's give him one right here. How about those? Cheese. All right, baby. Oh, hey, it ain't always easy, man, but it's always gonna be a battle. Remember that, man. Always. Hey, team on three. One, two, three. Team. Okay, look at the AFC West standings. Chiefs out in front at nine and one, but they will meet the Chargers again. Seven and two after a six game win streak, two and one in the division. Uh, Jim, what do you think? Can the Chargers keep pace with the Chiefs that's out this division? Can they keep pace? Yes. yes. Will they keep pace? I don't think so from this standpoint. Look, they still have to play at Kansas City on a Thursday night. They've lost nine in a row to the Chiefs. The Chiefs have had their number. You go back to last season, the two games they lost, six interceptions in those games. They've got to go out and prove it at this point that they can win in a hostile environment like Arrowhead Stadium. And until they do that, I have to ride with the Chiefs. Marcus Peters is making those picks, and Marcus Peters isn't on the Kansas City Chiefs anymore. <laughs> uh, look, Kansas City, the, the he big made he made some. He made, he made a Keenan. bunch of them. He made Keenan. a bunch Four of them. Six. You're, talking about, you're talking about last season, but yeah, I'm talking yeah. about prior to that, Keenan Allen had had his way with Marcus Peters. Yeah, but this is going to – so the Chiefs have to play the Rams in Mexico City. Yeah, this will be a big one this one. week. And, and that, so that's a huge game. So, you know, you count wins and losses. We'll see what happens right there. I, I'm with you. I think the Chargers can keep up. Now, will they win the division? I don't know. I think they're a playoff team. Uh, we're looking at the wild card situation. But the way the Chargers are playing, I, I mean – Complimentary football. We know they lose Perryman. That's tough on defense, but they could be getting Bosa back pretty soon. I, I just think the way they're playing down there, believing, and they've got a kicker now who can make their extra points and field goals, I, I think they can keep pace. Uh, Tom Telesco said on the, on the pregame show yesterday for the Chargers that uh, Joey Bosa will be practicing this week. So okay. that looks like That's that could news. be coming back here pretty soon. Now, my thing is when I look at this Chiefs team, they are humming along, no question. But you saw some cracks against the Arizona Cardinals, specifically the five sacks on Mahomes. Now you get Ingram, who's having a great year, and now you get Bosa to go along with Isaac Rochelle and Corey Legion. They've got some guys Erwin they can James throw. Uh, yeah, they got 33. some guys they can throw at this front now. So it'll be interesting. It's always, you see, meeting one, we saw that take place. We'll see how these teams have evolved and grown when they meet up for the second time. But are, are, the, are the offenses, let's say the, Chief, the Chargers were here and the Chiefs were here, are they at all coming back? Getting closer to even here? Well, I mean, Chargers I just look in that offense. game. The Chargers had some huge drops yeah. the first meeting there. That maybe is a different football game. So it, it's going to be fun. I know that Thursday night will be rocking. They will meet Thursday night, week 15. You'll see that right here on NFL Network. We got more to get to on the aftermath when we come back. The Saints put up 51 on the Bengals. But are they the best offense in the NFL? We'll have that conversation plus... Rams dealing with an emotional week here in L.A., how they were able to get the victory over the Seahawks at the Coliseum. Next. Tonight on NFL Total Access, the Saints marched on, the Rams rebounded, and panic for the Patriots, plus a preview of Monday night's matchup between the Giants and 49ers. Tonight, 6 Eastern. Right now, when you grab a $5 Double Chalupa box, you can enter for a chance to win an exclusive Platinum Xbox One X, only at Taco Bell. Put down the Chalupa. Focus. Wrong button, buddy. Wrong button. Every TV doctor knows nothing's more important than a good bedside manner. I don't know how to say this. It's okay, Doc. Give it to me straight. No, you don't understand. I don't know how to say this. I'm... Just a TV doctor. They also know you should get your annual checkup. It could save your life. Schedule a checkup with your doctor. Know your four health numbers and start taking control of your health today. Cigna, together, all the way. This holiday, let love ring. Get 25% off everything store-wide. November 16th to the 21st at K. Jorge Burgos fought his way up from keg washer to master brewer. Now he fights to make sure every drop has a crisp taste that's pure gold. Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit. Whatever your big job is, come into the Ram Black Friday sales event and get a great deal on the truck with the best resale value in the industry. And find out for yourself why more people are switching to Ram trucks than ever before. Because of all the things you've built this year, some are sweeter than others. 
Great deals going on all month at the Ram Black Friday sales event. Now get 1,000 Black Friday bonus cash for an average $10,000 in total values on the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. This holiday season, let Golden Corral do the cooking. We've got something for everyone. Savory slow-roasted beef, tasty turkey, classic ham, and so much more. Come in or order online and make it a Golden Corral holiday. Let's do the thing that you do. Let's clear a path. Let's put down roots. Let's build something. Let's do the thing that you do. Let's do the thing that changes the shape of everything, that pushes us forward and keeps us going. Let's do the work. As a coach, how do you run your team? With an iron hand. He was a perfectionist at the position, and he wanted you to be perfect. The expectations for quarterback coaches forevermore will change. Are you all right? Yeah. No more rocket balls, please. I would not be here if it were not for him. The Vic Lombardi Trophy is coming home. Who he was as a coach, as a teacher, Mike Holmgren made all the difference. All right, back to the highlights here on the Aftermath. We'll get you to Cincinnati. Drew Brees and the Saints on the road and on a seven-game win streak. Second quarter tied at seven. Not for long. Mark Inger, screen pass, break and tackle, spin move here. 28-yard touchdown. Brees to Ingram and then throwing up the X. There it is. Second quarter. Saints up 28 to seven. Eight seconds left in the half. Brees to Michael Thomas, end zone 17 yard score. Saints win it 51 to 14. Two of the principals in the victory, Mark Ingram and Drew Brees on the win. I think this is probably our most complete game thus far. Um, really all the way around offense, defense, um, uh, especially to come on the road after a, a big, you know, emotional victory at home against the Rams last week. Um, you know, we felt like this was going to be a really tough test. Every time we got on that ball, we trying to. We trying to make it happen, you know, it's nothing against, we focused on us, man. We know if we do our job, if everybody does their job, if everybody executes, nobody has to be superhuman, nobody has to be the Hulk, you just have to be the best you. And I think that's what we have on this team is guys doing their job, executing their job. And once we do that, we'll be all right. Well, 509 yards of total offense, I, I would agree, uh, Mark Ingram, everyone doing their job there. Are they the best at it? Are they the best offense, the Saints, in the NFL right now? At this moment, I'm going to say yes. And, and look at this. Look at their last two games. If you look at, they've had 19 possessions, if you exclude the end of the game. Okay. They've scored on 12 of those 19, uh, touchdowns, touchdowns on 12 of <laughs> oh, those man. 19 possessions. On four others, they also scored. So overall, they have produced points on 16 <laughs> of their last 19 possessions. That's insane. That paints a strong picture, I would agree. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead and have at that one. Well, by the way, Saints punter didn't punt yesterday. Um, but you know what? <laughs> and this is a tough call because I love the Saints. <laughs> <He's already> <laughs> but the Chiefs, I, I still have to go with Kansas City just because of the diversity of weapons. I mean, the, the Saints, they just kind of do what they do. They get it to Mike Thomas. They get it to the running backs. But the diversity of the weapons – that the Kansas City Chiefs have and the mayhem that they're causing opposing defenses. DJ, I know you just said Mahomes got sacked five times. Yeah. Part of that's the way he plays. I mean, he really kind of forces the issue a little bit. He steps into some, some sacks a little bit. But, again, the danger that they pose. And, again, this game Monday night against the Rams out of Mexico City that's is going to be, be awesome. a showcase. Yeah. But I, but I still have to say the Chiefs, even though I'm really <laughs> – right right The Chiefs are, are dynamic and explosive. Right. I, mean, I feel like we got to mention the Rams a little bit here yeah. because the Rams belong in that conversation. But yep. since New Orleans beat them head-to-head, -head, I take the Saints there. Then it becomes Saints-Chiefs. And I look at Drew Brees. He doesn't throw interceptions. He doesn't take sacks. He's been sacked nine times this entire season, and they're still explosive. So – I'll, I'll lean to the Saints on this one, but I would acknowledge I, I don't know if I want to see any of these three offenses in the postseason. Oh, no. Yeah, no question. They all have answers when defenses start to take Absolutely. one thing away. Absolutely. Russell, shotgun snap. Tries to get out of trouble. Gets the block. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown! Seahawks! Nick Bennett! Got this in the pocket. Drills. Middle. Goal line. Touchdown! Gerald Everett Penny. He finds the running room. Yeah. Touchdown! Seahawks! Gurley to 10, Gurley to 5, Gurley, Painter, touchdown LA! Tyler Lockett in the end zone! Touchdown! Right side, caught by Hickey, spinning into the end zone! Wilson, feeling the heat, stripped out, recovered by the Rams! Dante Fowler Jr. Jets 
sweep. Brandon Cooks to the end zone. Touchdown, LA! He pumps it, he throws, no good, and the Rams will win it. 36-31. So with the win, the Rams move to 9-1, and one, and by doing that, they can now clinch the NFC West next week. With the win over the Chiefs in Mexico City and a Seahawks loss, they'd be just the fifth team since the 16-game schedule began to win a division title by their 11th game. Off to an extremely hot start, and uh, we're going to send it up to Steve Weish now for a look at what the Rams have been dealing with. A very emotional week, Steve. Well, thanks a lot, Rhett. Well, before the Rams played host to the Seahawks Sunday, I spoke with numerous players and coaches from both teams about the tragic mass murders of 12 people near the Rams facility in Thousand Oaks, as well as the raging wildfires in the northern and southern parts of the state. How would the Rams players and coaches react after having to cancel practice Friday to evacuate themselves and their families? Could they focus knowing some of their homes were still in harm's way? Well, the Rams showed that for three hours, playing and coaching football was the safe haven athletes often claim protects them from distraction. Defensive tackle Aaron Donald had two and a half sacks to give him 12 and a half for the season, an NFL high. Wide receiver Brandon Cooks had 10 catches for 100 yards, and Jared Goff threw for 318 yards and two touchdowns. LA's 36 to 31 victory all but sealed the NFC West. What's going on, Rams Nation? Got the win against Seattle. Man, shout out to the whole city of LA. You know, through the shooting, through the fire. You know, I appreciate everyone sticking together. Prayers to everyone and their families, and I hope everyone is safe. We love you, LA. Afterwards, I also spoke to players still stung by the shooting at the Borderline Bar and Grill that took the lives of people in their community. Tackle Andrew Whitworth donated his game check to help families and victims, and other players pledged funds to help other causes. You know, to say it was easy, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, we'd be, we'd be lying. I mean, to watch your community and, and really the things that are going on around us uh, is extremely tough. As a father, uh, some of these kids and involved in the shooting and, and the homes lost and uh, having my kids, friends, homes, you know, lose homes and those kind of things. I mean, I think that's really tough on the football team. And, and uh, you know, because we're, we're humans first. I mean, we're people first and, uh, you know, we're athletes second. And so it's definitely a, a heavy-hearted day to play. After the game, as I was leaving the Rams locker room, I spoke to an equipment manager. He told me in the midst of evacuating from fires Friday and Saturday, he helped his staff pack up the team's facility so players and coaches would have what was needed in case the building burned down. He then told me how he watched firefighters from their trucks parked in his driveway save his home from burning. Then I realized that game I watched between tough guys and proud men in front of thousands of people was fun and all, but the stars of the weekend were still risking themselves to save others and provide comfort and care for families who suffered unimaginable loss. Thank you to those who didn't get to watch the game or interview players because of your bravery, courage, and skill in dealing with circumstances far more real than the safe haven that the NFL provided so many of us. Help people affected by the California wildfires by visiting redcross.org. Or text CA Wildfires to 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross California Wildfires Relief. Well said, Steve Weich. Echo those sentiments in a big way here from all of us in Southern California. When we come back here, Colts handed the Jags their fifth straight loss. Where do they stand now in the AFC South? Plus, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers up to their old tricks at Lambeau Field. Back at it. Where do the Packers stand as well? Next. With Chili's to go, baby, go, baby, go. You get three for ten bucks, baby, bucks, baby, bucks. And take it to go, baby, go, baby, go. While you sit on your butt, baby, butt. Three for ten bucks, baby, bucks, baby, bucks. Mm -hmm. And take, take your Chili's to go. go, baby, go, baby, go. This building season has been Jimmy's longest. Yay! He survived record rain and a supplier that went belly up. So while he's proud to have helped put a roof over the heads of hundreds of families, He's most proud of the one he's kept over his own. Get the most out of your money, whether you're using QuickBooks Smart Invoicing to get paid twice as fast or automatically tracking your mileage. Smarter business tools for the world's hardest workers. QuickBooks, backing you. 
A once in 500 year storm should happen every 500 years, right? Fact is, there have been 26 in the last decade. All state is adapting with drones to assess home damage sooner. And if a flying object damages your car, you can snap a photo and get your claim processed in hours, not days. Plus, Allstate can pay your claim in minutes. Now that you know the truth, are you in good hands? The comfortable, the familiar. Neither one of these will ever give you a new perspective on things or make your heart skip a beat. Comfortable isn't something you'll tell your grandkids about. And familiar? Well, that'll be there when you get home. But until then, there's a world that needs exploring. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's possible in the family of Hyundai SUVs. Expedia introduces Add-On Advantage, a new way to save on travel. Now when you book a flight, you unlock discounts on select hotels that you can use up until your trip starts. So whether you want to go out, stay in, or be in the middle of it all, add the perfect hotel when you're ready and save. Add-on advantage. Only with Expedia. We're more than just $5 medium one-topping pizzas, stuffed garlic knots, breadsticks, bone-out wings, pasta, and new Cinnabon mini rolls. We're the $5 lineup with the best sides for your pizza. $5 each. Choose two or more, $5 each. No one out pizzas the hut. Going up. Does he come down with it? Touchdown, Seahawks! Seattle's going to the Super Bowl! Some endings are unforgettable. But Thursday night, Rodgers and the Packers look to write a new script against Russell Wilson, the Seahawks, and their raucous home crowd. What a play by this defense. Packers, Seahawks, when it's on, it's on. Thursday night football, Thursday at 8 on NFL Network, Fox, and streaming on Prime Video. Welcome back to the Aftermath. Dolphins visiting the Packers. They are so good at home at Lambeau. 28 TDs, three interceptions in his last 11 home games for Aaron Rodgers. But pleasure watching the running game. Yeah, the Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. And it was, it's into been the end working. Zone. He's got to stick with it. Let's go third quarter now. Packers oh. up nine, adding to it Devontae Adams. Yeah, he wasn't covered very well there, DJ. Hop on spot in his own yeah, right there. just stopped right at covered. <laughs> just... <laughs> Packers. <laughs> Now getting back uh, for their fourth win of the season, 31 to 12. Here's Aaron Rodgers on winning at home. We're uh, pretty tough to beat at home right now, I think. Uh, and as the weather continues to turn in our favor, meaning colder the better, uh, I like our chances at home. But we got to win some road games, or we're going to be home in January. We're good. Well, he's right about that. Packers will get a shot to win one on the road on Thursday. There's been some interesting ones in that match. There, there have. <laughs> there have indeed. Uh, Seahawks hosting the Packers on Thursday night football as we kick off week 11, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You'll see it all right here on NFL Network, Fox, and Prime Video. NFC North matchup at Soldier Field. Bears, Mitchell Trubisky hosting the Lions. Bears sitting on top of the NFC North. If you keep making plays like this, you just might stay oh, there. Trubisky to Allen Robinson. I don't get it all the way around. The protection was great. Beautiful throw. Great catch. Robinson, six catches, 103, 33 yards, and two touchdowns. Second quarter. How about more? Mitchell Trubisky himself for the four-yard score. That was great. He was patient on that quarterback draw. A lot of guys rushed that. Bears 34 to 22. They get their sixth win. And here's a look at the Bears offense the last two weeks. Not too bad, right? Those total yards. Yeah, that, that'll do. 402 in Week 10, coming off uh, just 190 against Buffalo in Week 9. But, DJ, if you go back and you look at the two highest-priced acquisitions they made this year, Khalil Mack certainly been paying off, and now we're starting to see Allen Robinson really come to fruition. And what those guys have in common is the ability to win one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're looking for the formula to help a young quarterback – Get guys that can win in their one-on-one -on -one matchups. They didn't have that last year. And Allen Robinson, I'm going to show you in three plays what I'm talking about here. Man coverage. You got trips there. Watch all coming on in cuts. And just look at him win at the line of scrimmage. Create that separation. And then run after the catch. That's such an easy throw for Trubisky. And look what Allen Robinson is able to do with it. Now, 
is another example at the line of scrimmage. Got to win one on one. What's your release look like? Watch this release right here. Oh. Gone. It's over. Oh. It's right. it, he's, if you're even, you're leaving. That is over right at the line of scrimmage. He wins. Go, so you see him go up top vertically. We've seen him on in cut. So let's go back to that in cut one more time and watch him spin around the coverage right here off the line. A little hesitation release. Boom. Gone. That, that's over. The route is over. And that's, again, another easy throw for Mitchell Trubisky. So if you're a fan of a team like the, the Jets or the Cardinals and you're looking for your young quarterback to take that next step, Follow the blueprint that you saw right there with Ryan Pace and the Bears. Get guys that can win one-on-one, -on -one, and that starts right at the line of scrimmage. And trade for a generational pass rusher. And, and yeah, if the, and if the Raiders <laughs> oh, have, have more, somebody, have right? somebody like, in our get available. Uh, so, look, it, it is working right now for the Chicago Bears. Six and three. They're on top of the NFC North. They, they have a legitimate shot, don't they? But I, I, I think to DJ's point here, Mitchell is getting comfortable in that system. And I think you have to have some patience, and the Bears have. You talk about these other young quarterbacks today, some of these teams are going to have to go out and find someone who can relate to a young quarterback and put him in a situation that accentuates what he does best. And I think that's why we're all now starting to look at some of these teams that are struggling that have these rookie quarterbacks and wonder who is going to be that guy who is going to can help that quarterback off, yeah. develop. And we can they hold off the Vikings? Playmakers, play callers. you got to fill both those roles. Yeah, well, they've got the Vikings twice. I was looking yeah. at their schedule, and I, I see at least four more wins here. I see them getting to at least – 10 wins, but the way that they are starting to gain the confidence. We saw the, the record and the numbers are putting up the past two games. We know they've got fantastic running backs uh, with Howard and Tariq Cohen. And now you get Allen Robinson involved. I, I Look, guys, this – <laughs> they're real. I mean, we yeah. know the Packers and Vikings are there, but the Bears are real. I'm not ready to say they're real just yet. I'll feel a lot better about it if they can get past the Vikings that's this a big one. week. That's sure. A big one. I'm ready to say their defense is real. At Soldier Field. Yeah, that's, that, that's and, true. And defense travels in December and January. Uh, but they get the Vikings at home here in week 11. Uh, that's going to be a fun one to that watch Vikings on Sunday night too. football. Yeah, not bad. It hasn't played up to that level <laughs> of Ever a year Griffin's ago. Griffin's back now. Uh, hey, when we come back on the aftermath, we talked about Baker Mayfield as, and, and maybe getting Gave him a little bit of a Drew Brees comp coming into yep. the draft, right? We're kind of starting to see it happen now. We'll show you why next. Am I saying, well, Lachaim, Lachaim. Maybe you're making Mary. Or maybe you're making Coco. Maybe you're with the family you've got. Or maybe the one you've chosen. It's culture salad. Maybe there's lights. There's definitely lights. Maybe there's one less this year. Or maybe one more. Our holidays don't all look the same. And maybe that's what makes us great. Make the dream yours. IKEA. When heartburn hits, fight back fast with Tums Smoothies. It starts dissolving the instant it touches your tongue and neutralizes stomach acid at the source. Smoothies, only from Tums. Here we go. Discover, I like your card, but I'm absolutely not paying an annual fee. Discover has no annual fees. Really? Yeah. We just don't believe in them. Oh, nice. You would not believe how long I've been rehearsing that. No annual fee on any card, only from Discover. Clear lights. Color lights. Clear lights. I have an idea. A little inspiration and incredible prices can make the season even brighter. The moment you find your peace on Earth. Shop Lowe's and save $100 on a GE Asheville pre-lit Christmas tree. Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Hey. Hey, how much would you pay for something you don't want? Nothing. Is this a test? No. Question two. Do you like getting stuff you like for free? Yes, this feels like a test. It's not. It's just why Verizon lets everyone in your family get the unlimited plan they need without paying for stuff they don't. And why Verizon gets you six months of free Apple Music. Did I pass? Not a test. But yeah, you pass. Yeah. The music you want, the unlimited plan you need on the network you deserve. Switch now and get $300 off our best phones. I'm Dak. If you're like me, you don't get much downtime, which is why I'm shooting a soup commercial while training. Chunky Soup is packed with hearty meat and veggies, so when I do find time to eat, it is oh so good. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. It's time to take the next step on our journey. Watch any NFL game on demand with NFL Game Pass. Go kid! Full game replays. Threading the needle! Coaches fill. And slices up field just at the right time. Touchdown! Condensed games. Dive into the end zone! NFL Films Archive. I like that kind of body! NFL Football. Anytime, anywhere. With NFL Game Pass. Now at a new lower price. 
Introducing LifeRoom, where outdoor living meets future technology. LifeRoom's smooth glide screens keep harmful UV rays and bugs out, and its innovative cooling system gives you comfort and tranquility. Enjoy your life room year round with a free radiant heater. Call today for your free design consultation and learn more about this patent pending revolution in outdoor living that costs less than you'd imagine. Act now. Life awaits. Life room. Outdoor living. Perfected. Debbie Ocean, convicted felon. Her brother, Danny Ocean, more convicted felon. Ooh. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. Is it genetic? Are the whole family like this? $16.5 million in each of your bank accounts. Came on! Why do you need to do this? Because it's what I'm good at. Ocean's 8, now on demand. Rent or own this movie today with Fios On Demand. Hey, back live here with you on the Aftermath. When we finish up, we're going to turn it over to our friends on NFL Fantasy Live. They're going to have their Monday night fantasy projections as well as a wrap-up from everything that went down on Sunday. And here is Matt Money Smith with the preview. All right, it was a wild week 10, and Fabs here is going to kick it off with a player who nailed it this week in fantasy. Well, first off, Red, sorry I had to give you the beatdown in our NFL Talent League, pal. Don't take the loss too personally, but I love what we saw from Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. He finally got the featured back treatment from Mike McCarthy, went off, had a career day against the Miami Dolphins, and guess what we got in Green Bay now, guys? A featured back, finally. Nick Chubb was somebody who nailed it over the weekend. Really liked what we saw out of him this week. Once the Browns traded Carlos Hyde, we featured there was going to be a point in time where he would establish himself as the clear Number one running back in that in that backfield, and that's what he did. I believe the <laughs> lyric goes, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. <laughs> Eric Ebron has a new home in Indianapolis. Three targets, three catches, two touchdowns, and a rush TD. A revelation at the tight end position where we regularly struggle to score. Jarvis Landry. Five targets, two catches, 22 yards. Okay. Find out what you fit to do. All right, we'll do all of that and also get you ready for Giants v. Niners with our fantasy projections for all the players in that one. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Wait, why was Jarvis Landry a fantasy stud after two catches? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's... <laughs> Let's get back to the action here. We are going to talk about Baker Mayfield, his quarterback here. We talked a lot about Baker coming into the whole draft process, and there were some comps to Drew Brees, right? It's somewhat of a similar skill set. Similar skill set, similar size. You talk about the accuracy, the anticipation, and really the rhythm. He's a rhythm thrower. And so when you watch, I just watch we're these games to back to back, I started to see some similarities here. You're going to see Drew Brees off play action. Get your back foot, one hitch, anticipation. you got the back of a defender. So get the ball out right now. Little in cut. Ball's on the money. Just a nice rhythm, easy throw. So you go, okay, let's see what Baker Mayfield's doing. A little play action here. Get to the top of your drop. One hitch. You've got the back of the defender. you got a little in Take cut. It. Let's get the ball out early with anticipation. And look at that ball placement. Perfect accuracy there. And then now you see what the Saints offense does. I get the running backs involved. A little pick play here. Got the wide receiver coming down to occupy a defender. Got a little swing route going to the back. And again, nice rhythm and a touch throw by Drew Brees. Right on the money. Let him run after the catch. So then I'm... Go back. Okay, let's see what Baker Mayfield's doing. Oh, actually, you can see a wide receiver coming down here. A little it's kind of like the play. opposite, right? Yeah, yeah. going to the other side. Now yeah. we've got somebody leaking out. We've got the back leaking out of the backfield. Touch, anticipation in front of him so he can run after the catch. So much has been said. A lot of Browns fans talk about, well, okay, let's go get Lincoln Riley. If we don't get Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, let's copy that exact same playbook that Baker ran at Oklahoma. I'm here to say I don't think you're going to get Lincoln Riley. But what you can do is look what the New Orleans Saints are doing and find somebody from that tree and okay. try and run that exact same offense, and you'll get very similar results. 13 straight completions for Baker Mayfield. The last three weeks, even coming in, his passer rating was up 30 points. Been playing really well here the last month of this season. Hope it can Dangerous. continues. Indeed. Dangerous. Steve, you want to get us back to the highlights? Oh, absolutely. Let's go down to the AFC South. We've got the Jags at the Colts. Andrew Luck, five straight games with three-plus passing touchdowns here. Second quarter, Colts up 14-7. Luck to Eric Ebron for the 12-yard touchdown. Ebron's got three touchdown catches. Say what? Fourth quarter now, Jags trail 29-26 and buck 35 remaining. Blake Bortles finds a shot. Green for the 10-yard gain. Green is ruled down. But wait, what? 
Say, say what? Just look at this again. The call is overturned. It's ruled a fumble. The Colts recover. Now, Blake Bortles can't believe it. Five L's in a row for the Jags. Colts go on to win 29-26. First straight win for Indianapolis, folks. They're in business. And then this morning, Jalen Ramsey with this cryptic tweet. Hmm, I'm guys. gone from here. Yeah. Y'all gonna miss me. What does he think? Maybe he was out to breakfast. I didn't even say when I leave the restaurant. You never know. Wait, maybe. what are we gonna be missing? Like, what, I mean, like, is he leaving Twitter? Is that what's happening? Yeah, maybe he's leaving Twitter. Okay. And, well, the Jags aren't gonna let him go anywhere. But no, look at true. And, <laughs> as disturbing as that tweet might be to some people with, with the uncertainty with it, the one thing I was looking for in that game is that when the Jags got down early on this skid, how would they perform? At that point, would they shut it down or would they continue to fight? And they did. I think there's one encouraging thing from a Jag standpoint. I don't know what changes are going to be made in the offseason, and likely there will be some based on a team not living up to expectations. But that showed me that there is character within that locker room and among those players. And they may just need to weed out a few individuals that they feel maybe don't fit in. But that showed me something because if, if that call is not overturned, they're in position to kick a time oh, field goal or go in potentially for a win, and then it's a completely different conversation. One thing on the other team in that game, I think we'll look back in time and realize the Colts were very fortunate. Josh McDaniels is, is a really good coordinator, but that not working out, they got the right guy for this Great job point. in Frank Reich. He Great has point. been outstanding, and you can look at the impact of him no longer being in Philadelphia as an issue there as well. That was a domino that fell that affected a lot of franchises. Well put. So the Colts have now won three in a row. Yes, they have. Right? Like, well, let's not look now. They are in position here. They're not out of this thing in the AFC South. Look at the AFC South. We know, we know Houston's right there. The Titans are playing football. But now here come the Colts. And there is always a team that is laying in the weeds that emerges. Can they continue this run? Because if so, we can have a wild card team coming out of this division. And when you look at the overall structure of the AFC, and again, the way the Colts are protecting Andrew Luck, they're playing football. They've got the defensive rookie of the year. Sorry about that, DJ and Derwin James, but Darius <laughs> Leonard out of SC State. Oh, he's a big Darius Leonard guy. I, 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 award too now. Yeah, yeah, but Darius Leonard is a I big time drum player. I've been for Darius Leonard throughout the entire draft process. So he's like, he's, he's. I got, okay. I have multiple uh, fans of multiple <laughs> so, of these guys. So, so there you go. But I mean, the way they're playing on both sides of the ball now is exactly how you you really wanted them to play. Here's the scary thing for this division, though. This is phase one of Chris Ballard's rebuild. Yeah. He took care of the offensive line, and they're winning games. He's going to get more weapons to put around yep. Andrew Luck in the years ahead. This is going to be a very, very good football you team. You know what the scariest thing is for the Colts? Quentin Nelson pulling. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Good point. Uh, yeah, he can uh, lay the wood. That is for sure. All right, when we come back here, boy, the Jets have fallen on hard times. What's the status of head coach Todd Bowles? Wait to hear what his players had to say about the way this team's playing. That's next. What if numbers tell only half the story? At T. Rowe Price, hundreds of our experts go beyond the numbers to examine investment opportunities firsthand. Like a biotech firm that engineers a patient's own cells to fight cancer. This is strategic investing. Because your investments deserve the full story. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Right now, when you grab a $5 Double Chalupa box, you can enter for a chance to win an exclusive Platinum Xbox One X, only at Taco Bell. Put down the Chalupa. Focus. Wrong button, buddy. Wrong button. I've scored some pretty good deals on Poshmark, like the Bread Air Jordan 1. This is my favorite sneaker of all time. I was able to find a pair really easily without spending a crazy amount of money. Get $5 off your first order. Download the free Poshmark app now and use offer code LOVEPOSH. Once upon a time, the earth erupted with agave, and a hero named Jose Cuervo started making history. At the Battle of Puebla, Cuervo was there to load the shots. When Prohibition left us dry, Cuervo crossed the border to quench our thirst. Then Cuervo met the beauty Margarita, and the world's most famous cocktail was born. And it was Cuervo who turned beach volleyball into a party. For over 220 years, Jose Cuervo has made history, and 100% agave Cuervo Tradicional. 
We saved hundreds on our car insurance when we switched to GEICO. This is how it made me feel. It was like that feeling when you're mowing the lawn on a sunny day, and without even trying, you end up with one last strip that's exactly the width of your mower. When you're done, it looks so good, you post a picture on social media. And it gets 127 likes. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This holiday season, let Golden Corral do the cooking. We've got something for everyone. Savory slow-roasted beef, tasty turkey, classic ham, and so much more. Come in or order online and make it a Golden Corral holiday. Want to dominate your fantasy league this year? The running back is back. Our experts help with insights and analysis all season long. He is a one-man offensive attack. NFL Fantasy Live, coming up next on NFL Network. Get inside the huddle. Look at the patience. Look at the vision. Our crew analyzes the X's and O's and breaks down all the key plays from every game. Touchdown! That's the difference between winning and losing a game. NFL Playbook, Wednesday at 6.30, only on NFL Network. Oh, man, the headlines are getting tough in New York for the Jets wrecking bowls. They're from the Daily News after the Jets lost to the Bills on Sunday, but players are sticking behind their head coach like Jamal Adams. Listen, again, T. Bowles is not the problem. I'm going to ride with T. Bowles to the end. It doesn't matter. I don't care what the fans say. It's T. Bowles, man. I'm, I'm going to support my coach to pick it there. We all have to come together and win. The coaching staff, the players, everybody. We can't win with we, – we, we need everybody, period. You know, period, point blank. That's the first time I feel like someone has really just smacked us and we ain't do nothing about it. We ain't do nothing about it. Yeah, but the time, us, it, it was not time it. to talk afterwards. It was time to play yesterday. That's the problem here. You can't get away from the words that they said after that game where they yeah. talked about they laid down. Yep. Three and seven now, and they've lost 41 to 10 at home to the Bills. We're starting their fourth quarterback of the season, guy who had just signed two weeks ago, and Matt Barkley. Credit to him. But what does this mean for Todd Bowles? Is he is, is he really on the hot seat here, Jim? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You have to be when in season. No, I, I would no. be surprised if a change were made in season. But whenever your players come out publicly and say that they laid down, that's a direct quote. That's a problem for an organization. And here's the other thing from an ownership standpoint. It's one thing for your fan base to be angry, but if fans become apathetic, yeah. then you've got a bigger issue, and that's something that ownership's going to have to get uh, and, and that's a problem the Jets are always having to face going up against the Giants, who are the bigger team in that market. Todd Bowles absolutely is in trouble right here. If he makes it to the end, he's going to make it to the end of the season, according to Ian Rappaport's reporting. Yeah. It's going to be interesting at the end of the season to see if GM Mike McCagney could also join Bowles on the uh, – and we do have a coaching change uh, as of today after allowing over 500 total yards on defense for the third straight week. The Bengals have now parted ways with defensive coordinator Terrell Austin announcing those changes here today. And uh, Marvin Lewis will assume the defensive coordinator role, taking on more of those responsibilities in addition to what he's doing as the head coach and was asked about that plan today. How do you, how do you, how do you coach the defense and the team? I got a plan. You just have to watch and see. Do you, uh, do you need somebody to help come in and help you with some of those extra responsibilities? You just have to watch and see. Would that person be named Hugh Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> watch and see. And we will watch and see. We will also get to three now. DJ, you're up. All right, I was at this uh, Charger Raider game, and Austin Eckler, what he did on special teams, probably going to go unnoticed by most. Not, Not for me. Us. Five tackles he had on special teams. You see him as a gunner here getting double teamed. Just as the first one down. He always wants to be the first one down. He's the first one down. Makes initial contact. Doesn't finish. That's fine. Gets on the ground. Gets right back up. And that ends up picking up the tackle. One of five tackles. So that's on punt coverage. We've seen him do that as a gunner. Now let's see him on kickoff here. Again, he's almost always the first one down for this Chargers kickoff unit. There's one earlier in the game where he actually spins off a block. This time, he's just going to navigate through traffic, a little slip and slide, around a couple blocks, lay out, and then pick up a tackle. Five tackles on special teams. Tip of the cap to Austin Eckler. Well, big time. Hey, I'm going Jared Goff setting up for the NFL's yes. Leia with an A of the week. <laughs> Let's get it started here. Roll the tape. Good read! Yeah. Hey, Halle Berry! Halle Berry! Hey, I'm single with 
Hey, Halle Berry! Halle Berry! Hey, I'm single with Kitty! No! Hey, Halle Berry! Halle Berry! Hey, I'm single with Kitty! In case you didn't hear it, he was saying Halle Berry. Well, here's the actress had to say to Jared Goff, like, uh, hey, big boy, what time is that? <laughs> to which Jared Goff has to say, uh, that was my favorite play ever. Shoot your shot, boy. <laughs> nice, Sean nice. McVay agreed, by the way. It's oh, also yes. his Look, favorite play. I don't know how I top that, but Steve, I think you'll appreciate this. My shout-out goes out first and foremost to Frank Weiss, your father, hey. is celebrating his 80th, 80th birthday, birthday today. Happy you know? birthday, Bob. And I want to give a shout out to my young daughter, Tara, who is celebrating her 25th birthday How about today. Happy right. right. birthday. Happy you know? birthday. And lastly, old, brother. In, in remembrance of, of, of salute to service week, I think we all want to celebrate. Our veterans, oh, active, retired, no absolutely. question. So. No, this day and every day, uh, and again, a big thank you as well to all of the firefighters out there continuing to fight uh, and protect uh, structures and lives here in California, both Southern California and Northern California. Uh, certainly hits close to home for all of us here uh, in the LA area. So, big thank you out to all those guys. True uh, heroes, as well. we appreciate absolutely. what you True do. Heroes. Absolutely, no question about it. And uh, of course, we'll be back here with you next Monday on the aftermath after a big Monday night game in Mexico City. You're looking forward to that game next week uh, as well. So we'll see you next week.